We're returning again today to Stardew Valley for the 100 days. Uh, this is going to be the close-up series. I, I realize that I have ignored some tips as I go through, so I'm going to try to do a better job today. But I'm generally just kind of chilling my way through the game. Not really anything crazy, because I felt like if I tried to do too much MLG... I, I'm just... I, I wanted to muddle through this playthrough slightly. And I, I think I have successfully muddled through it, as I wished to. So I'm... Happy about that, but yeah, we're on day, I would say, 36 or so now here. I have to double check exactly. I want to say that spring had about 28 days, right? Didn't that have 28 days? So doesn't that put us at... Oh, no, that would put us at day 46. My bad. So yeah, whatever day it says on the title is whatever day we're on. But yeah, I mean, we're, we are chugging our way along, and it's feeling pretty good. We did a lot of, a bit too much time in the mines the other day. But I, I think we'll still keep going down that route, because I gotta get sprinklers, just because look at how much energy it takes me to water my own crops every day. I want to get to iron, but we gotta get to level 40, and I know I wasn't taking the shortcut. Um, you could also use the hoe on the ground, apparently, for uh, cave carrots. So I, I think that would be a really useful tool. Um, gonna be using the garden hoe. Uh, bring that down to the mine with us, although I think I left it with the... No, I've got it with me. I've got one other tool in the blacksmith, though. And that is my pickaxe, so we will wait. Uh, spend a little bit more time on the farm, but then just generally speaking, I'm finding that I'm learning a lot after the season has passed, so. Um, but yeah, I think in general, like, chat has advised me pretty well on which crops to plant. So, like, the blueberries, we made a ton of money on those. Um, I, I think we're going to start making a lot more money. I'm just trying to figure out how to leverage it to get better tools and stuff like that, so... Yeah, like, uh, feel free to give me any tips, and I'll try to pay a little bit more attention today. I think the last time I was a bit too, like, stream of consciousness, but, yeah, I had a lot on my mind, so I was thinking about that. But I still will kind of go down some of those rabbit holes again, because, well, I personally feel that the journey of Stardew Valley is a philosophical one, a la, like, you know, Virgil and his Georgics, you know? The philosophy of the farm, that is to say. Anyway, I also got some questions, because I usually just solicit my chat with all kinds of bizarre questions on life, practical things, how to, cha how to do plumbing in my house. And so I will be taking advantage of that also throughout the stream, because I think uh, that is highly useful of them to give me that information when I ask for it. Sometimes, although I do get misinformation, so I have to probably watch out for that. Um, let's see, the 18th, we've got 10 days left in summer. I don't believe that's enough time for water Malone uh, anymore. Also, War Diddly, thank you very much for the sub. Do appreciate it. And Eat Booty, thank you very much for the 100 bits. CJWXVII, I guess 17. And Jardzar and Mr. Beaver, thank you very much for the subs. Chat is 100. I mean, honestly... I do learn quite a lot of things that I wouldn't expect from basic Googling. There's something to be said about having a pan panel of, like, a thousand people uh, by your side who are all not artificial intelligences. This is better than chat GPT. I have it great. You guys spoil me. I'm really lucky. I think I will buy another backpack now, though. Because what else am I going to spend? I guess I could spend it on tools. Is space really limiting me? It is starting to limit me. Or I just get lazy with it. I do kind of want it for the tools. But I'm going to be harvesting more in like a couple of days. Let's do it. Let's bite the bullet and do it. We're buying a backpack. Now we have the deluxe backpack space. At least I don't have those gray spaces bothering me anymore. I mean, we're going to get another blueberry harvest in just a couple, right? And I also have... These nuts. <laughs> Look, I have them. Who would I romance? Maybe that's a good question of what to do next. So what do I do? I'd like just throw a gift at them? Hey, DJ, what's up? Thank you very much for the sub. Do appreciate it, man. Nine months. My morning's going pretty well. What was I going to uh, talk to you guys about? Oh, yeah, I wanted to go find the back passageway to the mines because apparently I was going way too far the last time, so I want to be careful with that. If we go back here, I was told that it's faster. Oh, look, grapes. Fantastic. I'll throw these at a woman and she'll love me. Just throw grapes at them. <laughs> Don't do that. But if we take Stardew Valley literally, 
throw grapes at your beloved until your beloved loves you back. Grapes are for Vincent. Oh, is, is there a particular person? Abigail is the only choice. Let me go with, I was thinking of Pam. You know, she's been living in a trailer. I I feel like I could feel, fulfill a lot of her needs by bringing her into my life. But let me just check out all of the ladies. We need a woman who works for her own money. We're very lucky to have a library in such a small town. Okay, so Penny likes books. If she likes public spaces, all right, let me hit up the ladies. Where are them ladies at? Who are they? Only one is married. Is Robin married? Who else? Um, I'm trying to think. Most of the other ones that come to mind are like old men. No, I, I need a lady. No, you're not. You're not. Harvey. People love grapes. Okay, can I get the old lady? I need someone to take care of me. I do not require offspring. I just need... <laughs> Wasn't that, didn't that happen in the original Harvest Moon? Don't you have a baby at the end of the game or something like that? Did that happen? I, I mean, I know that you could never put the baby to work. But I feel like that these games are always just about kind of automating simple processes. And I found it silly that the baby couldn't be put to work at the end of the game, you know? More workers for the factory. I consider bees and butterflies to be my special friends. Okay, she's, see, she's pretty out there. We don't really know what kind of baggage she's got, Emily. She almost would be a really nice person. Oh, here she goes out of her house. Staring at nature again. Except that doesn't seem very, like, efficient or productive, you know? I need, I need someone who can help me around the house. Emily is the best. Everyone has some opinion on this. So supposedly then there's no like perfect one size fits all choice. Let me go hit up Pam. Pam, how you doing today? Pam is the one who lives in a trailer and it, I mean, generally, generally speaking, I don't know why she's not even in there. Never mind. Momentary. Thank you very much for the 300 bits. I appreciate that. Emily. Right now, uh, was Emily the one with the books? This is Pam. Hey, Pam, what's going on, babe? Wait, sorry, it might be too soon. Hi there, farmer. So what happens if I throw something at... I mean, you know. Take it. What if I just woo all of them? I've already given Pam a gift today. Okay, why don't I just woo all of them? I'll spread a wide net, and then I'll... <laughs> and then I'll see who likes me. Maru. Well, what are you like? What's your, what's your problem? Sorry, I was just thinking about some gadgets I'm making. I've decided I'm going to build a robot someday. That should be very easy for you. You should be more realistic. Yeah, it sounds challenging. But I love a challenge. See, I, the other, the other answers would have invalidated what she was doing. So I'm practicing my good, uh, listening skills here. We could talk. Honestly, we had like a very real talk in the last stream. I, I kind of appreciated that. I appreciate the fact that in this stream I can literally talk about anything I want, and you guys are fairly like receptive to it. Sometimes I get very off topic though. Oh, okay, a little bit off topic, but a little bit on topic here. Uh, well, let's see. What else have we got for our farm? No, I think we're gonna wait another day on the blacksmith before we get our pickaxe back. So let's just go to bed. It's 5:40 p.m. That's pretty good. I think maybe once we get some blueberries back, we'll send some... Uh, do they like certain gifts better than others? I suppose they must, right? Oh, anyway, I wanted to update you guys a little bit on the editor situation. So, I am I asked the editors for, like, uh, or the trial editors, or audition editors. I, basically, I auditioned a bunch of people on a video. Like, they sent me their old stuff, but then I wanted to see how they would do with one of my videos. So, I sent them a bunch of sample footage and instructions, like, really detailed instructions on how to make a video of my type. And they, a lot of them did really, really well. Um, so I got to pretty much, I think everybody I picked I could work with in some capacity. It's just some people I felt like would kind of learn it a little bit faster than others. So it's sort of like, okay, like 
either right now or a little bit further down the line. Um, but yeah, like I'm I'm pretty hard with feedback, but also like very realistic. And I think they got stuff that's even possibly better than what I would have gotten if I had been the one editing the videos. Like I am frightened of how good some of the applications are. So I'm I'm pretty excited. We're finally gonna have at least two people, um, assuming that they're interested in doing like a uh, a period. But anyway, yeah, I'm basically planning on. Like, also taking a little bit more, but I gotta talk to him to see, like, how much time everybody wants. And then, uh, yeah, I'll have some editors. And, like, I'm pretty excited because it just lets me work on more projects. It's literally the reason why I get to do Stardew Valley right now because it's such a huge project. But it takes a lot of time to do the gameplay, but I've always wanted to do it. And it's pretty easy for me to, like, just script something. I have a very specific way of managing how to do a video essay. It's one of my, like, trade secrets. But, uh... I mean, not really. It's fairly straightforward what I do. But yeah, like, uh, anyway, I taught them all that, and, like, hopefully they'll use it. But yeah, the other thing, too, is that, um, or, like, hopefully they'll take it into their own practice in some way, I guess. Developing. I like editing. It's just that I don't have enough time during the day to do all of it. But yes, it is fascinating. Anyway, that is to say, yeah, that stuff will be coming soon, and uh, hopefully, ideally, I don't like to set out promises, but I'm doing it here again. I'd like to have a video on the weekly again, because I like the kind of weekly video turnout, because I think it just lets me cover enough content, and that's my favorite way to do things. Maybe in time, you know, like, really under ideal circumstances, I'd like to do two a week. Just because I feel like there's so many ideas I want to do, but I would never want to sacrifice the quality of them. Um, so generally speaking, I think it's better to, uh, I, that would be like in optimal life circumstances, like nothing else going on, but obviously life happens, so I'm like, yeah, one a week is great, and I love that. It's not really about the quantity, I don't want to give you that impression, but there's also something to be said about staring at a project for too long, and earlier in my YouTubing, I think I could stare at a video for about 24 hours before I got tired of it, which was very short now when I look back. Um, some people can't stare at one for even an hour when they first start editing, though, because they don't really know what they're doing. But now I could do it for maybe a week or ten days. And I generally think that's a pretty good sweet spot, because after that I start to get tired of it. But I don't know what will happen in the future. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. Anyway, that's the editor situation a little bit. Um, uh, let me see. But I think that's pretty much it. It should be interesting. Um, I personally am excited to see what they can come up with. And my energy already, again, is just so low. Jeez. Jeez, oh, man. I guess I could go over to the saloon, though, and just get more energizing food. It opens at noon. Let's go to Mr. Blacksmith, then, for now. Get it, but can give you a foot massage while at it. Honestly, might not be bad. It was wild. Before I looked into editors, I, like, I had to fully finish off my, like, home office because I felt like I didn't... Ooh, copper pickaxe. There were a couple of things just, like, ergonomically in the way of me, uh, editing efficiently. So I was just like, okay, let me solve these. So I tried splurging a little bit on a new office chair, stuff like that, just to make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I'm not gonna lie, there's certain limitations that... Uh, you just, like, need more people for. And I, I think it's nice. I, I, I wasn't really open to working with other people for a while. Like, I, I had kind of turned inward. But then, um, you know, over the last year or so, I feel like I've just gotten more open to, like, or I guess the last six months or so, I've been a lot more open to working with other people. Um, more so than, like, kind of a lot of people... Um, I guess maybe, like, in the gamer sphere, maybe. Mm, a lot of people enjoy, or I guess maybe based on observations with students that I had in the past, a lot of people just kind of like being left to their own devices and working without the hassle of, like, some boss nagging them overhead. Uh, they, they do pretty well with just a deadline, and, like, any other type of work expectations, just kind of let them do whatever they want to do. I think there's something to be said of that, and I think there's something to be said of, like you know, less red tape on everything. I think we learned a little bit of that during, like, the pandemic. But, uh, yeah, I came to the point in my own life where I was like, okay, 
I need some type of community here, whether like online or on my own. Uh, and I, I think it's been helpful. Yeah, I've just uh, been enjoying it. But yeah, like uh, I, I'm again in the kind of teaching spirit of it, and it's been fun. I've had more fun giving feedback to the editors and like teaching them a little bit just about how the video is made. I think they all have a lot of really good technical ability. But um, a little bit is like just kind of showing them how YouTube, I guess, works more or less in relation to video editing, as I know it. I'm not saying like I understand the whole thing perfectly, but it should be interesting. Will I ever do Inscription again? Probably not. That's a good game, though. Some people need to be micromanaged. Some people need to be given targets and left alone. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of the people who are, get really creative with tasks need to be given ta targets and then left alone. I agree with you on that. Yeah, it's like, give them the thing and then get out of their way, and they'll do a great job. Like, I had this, um... Back when I was teaching, I taught, like, kind of a normal class. And they... You kind of end up at the speed of the slowest student. Which is really like a crime to the, you know, like the really, uh, like the really gifted or, um, motivated kids in the class. Um, because they don't really get challenged enough. But then I taught one class of kids who would be considered like, I don't really like the term that they use for this, but gifted and talented. Like that's just, you know, AP or whatever you would call it, but they were younger than like AP, so, um, yeah, so... Pretty much, like, those kids do really well if you give them some skills and then you just let them be creative with problem solving. Like, those kids want a challenge and they'll do great with it, but, you know, like, other kids kind of need their hands held more um, in almost everything. They don't, like, some of them just won't learn the thing that you want them to in depth. But, like, the ones who really want to challenge, you want to be there to challenge them. And that is like a crime, I would say, of uh, standardized tests and standardized types of education where, like, you really just don't challenge the kids at the top of the class enough. Jesus, that was a huge fish. <laughs> Look at that. That was bananas. I mean, it was tuna. It wasn't bananas, but... Oh, man, my energy is really depleted throughout the day. Uh, okay, I guess I could go to the saloon. I want to get a baguette or something like that to get a little bit less tired tomorrow. It's getting, to be, it's getting very late in the day, 3.30 p.m. Yeah, it was funny. Like, I taught, uh, I taught math with a colleague for, let's just keep calling them gifted and talented for lack of a better term, gifted and talented kids in, like, a summer program less once. Than three. And, uh... He just taught the kids skills. Like, he didn't teach them all the kind of common core, like, problem-solving stuff where it's like, draw a diagram and do all this stuff. And the kids did way better because once you gave them the basic skills, they, like, they were able to build up and, say, like, make sense of things rather than try to do it, like, memorizing this crazy process that... I don't really know what I'm doing there. I mean, like, I'm, I don't fully understand all the pedagogical literature on it, but... Yeah, like, it's, uh... There's something to be said about a skills-based curriculum. Anyway, I but relating it back to video editors teaching, I suppose. Yeah, like some people do really well if you just give them a bunch of tools and then get the hell out of their way. And then like if they need another day or two, it's fine, you know. Like, oftentimes I find that, I, I believe they call it Parkinson's Law, uh, where you, wait a minute, is this empty? Okay, no, this is not empty. Like work, expands to fill the amount of time that you allocate for it. And sometimes people will just do a lot at the last minute. So, it's interesting. Hey, Rook, thank you very much for the three months, my friend. As for ADHD and focusing on task as a teacher, uh, usually we would work with, like, school psychologists on that type of thing. I found that a lot of interventions work. Like, for example, like giving a kid a checklist or something like that could often be a real help. Like, I had a couple of students who, like, had really, really intense ADHD, and they would, like, uh, like, it would be like they would walk in your classroom and they'd just kind of lose focus immediately. And, like, really nice kids, but it was also just like, uh, we want to get started today with this. And, um, 
Yeah, like I had one, I had one student who had to have a checklist literally on her desk, and like she was on board with it. Like we worked with it, and it was. But it was um, yeah, she had a funny personality, but like um. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty intense too, and it can be a little bit like sometimes you feel like you're banging your head against the wall. Some people don't do that well in such a structured environment, though, too. I don't know, every I think there's a lot of stuff that school doesn't really test people for, too. To be fair, not that that's such an original opinion. All right, cool. We've got just about everything that we need now. Uh, we can make a lot of money. We can get our hoe that in works. the ground. Pop Gathering data at the correlation. Hey. Hi, chat and Lord Glompus, thank you very much for the sub. Uh, it's it, it's ver Differentiated learning is very, very difficult. And it, it takes a lot of experience from educators to do it. Just because... Think about any class where everybody is at a totally different lesson or level. I mean, that's going to be every single classroom to a certain extent, but... It's ridiculously hard, but, you know, you should be able to... The, the biggest thing is, try to, as much as you can, put the doing into your students' hands, I suppose. Though, I'm not really... No one's coming to me for pedagogical advice. Except for a few gamers who watch this channel and happen to be teachers, so... I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> I'll leave it at that for now. Alright, today, what should we do? I was thinking of selling these blueberries. Then we should probably go to the blacksmith. I think I want to start to get these last tools done. Let's start with the scythe, just because I have no use for the scythe today. I just feel like I want to upgrade my tools for some reason. I think that would be good. Yeah, we'll do that. And we'll head back. Head back around. And then we'll go into the mine. I think now that we have the pickaxe and we have a better sword... Now we could probably do it. We might get a couple more health and energy items, or maybe we won't sell all of these. And I say, let's, uh... As, as my friend says... <laughs> ignore women, acquire currency. Um... <laughs> we will continue on our grind toward expanding the farm. Although, can getting married help you expand the farm? Of course I'm kidding. I've never heard this before. One of my friends is just like a very meme -y person. Apparently this is a, the meme of the hour. <laughs> oh, your spouse does help depending upon who you marry? Oh, how do they help out? I gotta give that a try. I gotta give that a try. I guess I've just been stalling, waiting, wasting time right here. Though time is usually not my limiter for the day anyway. That is to say. Blacksmith. Then we'll go to the main store. Then we'll keep a couple of our melons. And then we'll go from there. Let's do uh, the... Oh, I don't even have the option of the scythe. Okay, I guess we'll do with the copper hoe then. Um, fine. Fine. Because you said so. Because you asked me to. I guess we will try to woo one of the women then, eventually. Let me just go for Pam, you know? I like Pam. Yeah, I'm, I'm into that. Although, she doesn't really work, though. That Like, why isn't she... She's not trying to get out of her, like, squalor living situation. I'm gonna give her one of the big blueberries. I'm gonna give you the biggest blue... <laughs> You did good this one. Oh, she's closing her eyes out of pleasure. Wait a minute, can I? That's enough. Yeah, she wouldn't respond to any more gifts, would she? Uh, well, what happens if I give them to men? Thanks. How nice, thank you, dear. I'm trying to hit up that old lady. I don't want to waste all this money, though. Ignore... <laughs> Ignore everyone. Acquire currency. Scythe also doesn't use stamina. Oh, interesting. Hi, huh, I hadn't thought of that. Did I download the wrong start? <laughs> Let me save the melons in here. 
Oh, I got an achievement. Cowpoke. I guess it's for more money. I'm trying to save up some money, too, for fall, just so that... Isn't it supposed to be that... Pam... Pam Dre... She isn't dateable. What the hell? That's offensive, you guys. Take that back. Take that back. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing around. I don't know what I'm saying. Alright, so, what do I say? I go to the girl who's talking about the books and sits on a bench. What is she gonna do? She could come back to my house. I have to do manual labor all day. I need a strong, like, I need a big, thick woman who can labor in the fields all day. Water harder, dear! <laughs> what is wrong with me? Uh, a lot. A lot. Anyway, here I go, um, doop de doop de doo down the hole. 25, 25. I've got good energy. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies. In the words of, was it Kendrick? I wanna say it was Kendrick. <laughs> I always think I'm quoting Kendrick. I should've checked on the luck, man. Ah, what an idiot. Have been now. I get how the luck thing works, though. I I get a little bit more of that. I I know how the North Passageway works. Tell me if I'm making any more mistakes here, because I did read back through the VOD and I was ignoring some very basic tips the last time. Do appreciate that. Oh yeah, where is the? Oh no, I didn't bring my garden hoe with me, but apparently I could use that to dig up cave carrots, to like um, conserve stamina or like get back energy as I go down. Uh, but there are a bunch of secrets in this game that I would not have known if I had not checked them with you guys. I guess you, you could kind of see that through the tilling of the soil, though. Look at me go. I'm collecting ores. Like RuneScape. I must have pretty horrible luck today because I'm not getting anything right here. But look at how well I'm doing with this, though. Can the caves be dug up to get carrots, artifacts, and other things? Oh, so there's even more than just cave carrots. That's nice to know. Back in I go. Oh, you know, I didn't even use the block function on the sword, though. Eh, it doesn't work very well. Yeah, that it seems more unwieldy than helpful. I was wondering about that, though, like, potentially using a shield. Just that sound effect of them buzzing around is perhaps the worst sound effect of them all. Oh, I see. If you get the larva before they hatch, then they never get the opportunity to well hatch. I thought they always hatched, even when they died. That is also helpful. Helpful to know. Helpful to know. Damn you! I can't think of an enemy that's more repetitive and annoying, though. I don't get a lot out of that guy. A lot of enemies. Got a lot of enemies. Ah, dang. It's okay, it's okay. We're surviving, we're surviving. Kill them as <laughs> they will not grow. <laughs> Kill them while they are in the crib. Just the larvae, that is. Yes, that's right, Chad. I used it. Larvae, it's Latin. Dulce et decorum est. Pro patria mori. Weeny weedy weeky. Can you tell that I was using both the classical, or what is it, the, uh, the church pronunciation slash the Italian pronunciation and the classical Latin pronunciation? I took Latin in high school and I'm a major geek for it. Oh, wait a minute. No, you will not get to mature and grow up. I won't allow it. There we go. Good, I have prevented them from aging. Phew. Ah, I hate that. Do I think I'd try out Total Warhammer? Potentially. Now that I have so much more time for other types of projects, one of the really big genres that, uh, genres. One of the genres of games that I haven't had enough time to play over the last couple of years is uh, Grand Strategy. I really like Grand Strategy and just like, I guess the Total War games you might can, they're not really Grand Strategy. What would you call that? Like, what type of RTS? I'm trying to think. I would consider going back to that type of thing. I mean, I really like Warhammer. It's very fun. I just never have had enough time to sink my teeth into it. I enjoy painting the miniatures and stuff like that, too. 
my favorite pizza topping. Probably mushrooms. Die before you have a chance to... God damn you! Oh, he goes back in like Metapod. Look at him go. I think we're doing better, though, this time around. You know, the floors don't really seem to get that much more difficult aside from these annoying enemies. That's the one exception. Joja Cola time. Hey, thanks, Spaghetti. Er, right, thanks, Toby. Toby Spaghetti. Sounds like his czar. Uh, what kind of name is Toby? It sounds like Tony Spaghetti. <laughs> Tony Spaghetti, everyone. Oh, hey, look, it does get more difficult. Look, here we go, iron, or well, maybe we'll be seeing iron. Ooh, zombie rock golem people. I wonder what they respond to. Positive feedback. They respond to positive feedback. Look at that, that's crazy. Let me have one of these. Eat him alone. Get it, now I'm post Malone. <laughs> Cause I just had him alone, get it? Ah. Uh. Ah. I'm not post Malone actually. I've been managing my rap career and this at the same time. Guys, I just met a guy with a face tattoo the other day. Fucking awesome. Gotta say, gotta say. It's my friend's uh it's a friend of my friend. Well it's not really a face tat, it was like a side of the head tat. But he basically had a mohawk and it was one of the coolest tats I've ever seen. Um and like, damn. I really would like to get a tattoo now. Although the one thing is that I change my mind too often. And I, I want to get a tattoo because I'm afraid I won't be cool enough if I don't have a tattoo. So that's, uh, I don't think it's a very good reason to start. I think that's sound logic. So I'm waiting five to 10 years until I have an exact design in mind. So I'll probably end up getting a tattoo by the time I'm like 50. Which I feel like it's, it's starting to get kind of, like, like you're past the time of when it would have been cool to get the first tattoos. Like, maybe I'll just get tons of tats, like on my deathbed, you know? Like the Emperor Constantine, creating the Holy Roman Empire. Constantine must have been one of the most paranoid people. Really interesting ancient room. All right, I'm getting off on tangents now. They do make you cooler, it's true. Like permanently add cool, coolness plus five. Very, very cool. Yeah, you could do other things though. You could get dangly cross earrings and that's pretty cool. Well, you have to get a, a piercing for that. You might change your mind. What if my ear gets caught on something? These are some of my natural fears. Although I think it is good to entertain the thoughts. We entertain the thoughts. Very cool. Uh, wait a minute. Not okay, not okay. Um, I'm thinking about our light situation. So far I'm getting this little aura of light around me from my ring. But, eh, uh, don't really need it. There are other cool things you can do. Oh, one thing I was trying to figure out. See, guys, I have an Lots issue. Stream, channel. Mm. Thanks for the school site stream slash channel. Stardew stream. Hey, Social Boner, I'm glad that you got out of something out of that rant. I uh, Sometimes those aren't just for me, I suppose. I do appreciate it, though, that you actually... That you hear me out on that. It's interesting. Yeah, that stuff really needs... We really need to do more to support that as a society. I'm just gonna name things that I think we should support more of. Wow, I'm one of the most morally virtuous streamers. Stardew Valley streamers of all time. By talking about the real issues... Man, I gotta stop being so cynical. Yeah, no, I thought it was a fun talk. I, I'm glad you got something out of it. I got a little too off topic a little too early in the uh, in the playthrough, but I figure what am I gonna talk about here? Just fighting. A lot of this game is necessarily kind of grindy. Uh, Stardew is one of those games that lends itself better to video essays than actual Let's Plays. Like Zomboid or Rimworld. The intricacies of what you're doing minute by minute are interesting, but Stardew right now... 
This is a bit of a grind. This is a bit of a GBA experience we're getting right here. You know what I mean? Like, we're in the back seat of your, of your dad's car, and we're playing Game Boy Advance, and we're both between, like, the ages of 10 and 12, and we're having a great time. We're having a great time. At least that's my experience. With my boys, you know. Oh, damn it! Dude. No, not very cash money of these bats to keep coming back to me with more... Oh, so you can get more entrances just by accomplishing various tasks. There we go. Hey, bat wings. Cool. Very nice. New tattoo, no rhyme or reason, just most random stuff. And you know what I like? I will say what I do like, because I think for most of... I'm not like... Some people are religiously against tattoos. I, I feel like I've come... Or that my main thing is just that I change my mind a lot, so I'm like, I, I would definitely not like it. I'm I'm more confident that I wouldn't like it in years. But that is to say that if and when I ever do get a tattoo, I will really want it. Because I've noticed that with my decision making in life, is that I have periods of indecision, but then I have periods of, like, great decision, you know? Okay, it is getting very late at night. I should probably just leave, because I think I'm going to go back home at two and that's not okay we don't want to faint in the mine we got what 10 levels today what was that 35 yeah so we're almost at 40 hell yeah good we have to get home we're gonna go back up through the upper pass though this time and indecision and out decision <laughs> yeah i think it's cool when they like when they come up with full sleeves like somebody starts with one tat and then they build on it i think that's really neat that is my fear, is that if I didn't plan out the whole thing... Wait a minute, this isn't the right way. This is totally not the right way. I'm going to faint now. Not good. Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's two. Okay, I've fainted. I was supposed to go back this way. Alas. But I did get level three in combat. Ooh, more pickaxe proficiency as well. Very cool, very cool. Doesn't seem like I lost anything either. I could, st I could still keep going after this. We just need to recoup a little bit more energy today. This Malone carrying around has been very helpful. Starting to see that, like, energy applies in similar fashion. We should be able to get one more blueberry harvest. These blueberries were fantastic, guys. What do we get? Three harvests out of these things? Maybe four if we even planted them on the very first day? We didn't have a lot of money at the beginning of the summer, though. But I think this is going to lubricate our wallets very nicely. new here what are we doing we're playing 100 days of stardew valley and we're kind of learning gradually as we go sometimes chat backseats and helps me sometimes i just muddle through on my own and that's okay that's okay oh see i got a practical question now for you guys okay i'm going to abuse you no, i won't abuse you but i will nag you and bother you um for uh <laughs> i would never do that uh for advice I don't know where to find t-shirts that fit. This is like a very basic problem. See, I'm going to tell you a little story here. I used to shop at H&M. I like their style, but uh, their clothes look good when they're new. But then after like the first day that you own them, the shirts just lose their shape. Like totally. The collar gets stretched out. And uh, I mean, every shirt kind of has a life. But yeah, they don't really work. Some shirts also, too, like, have way too much bagginess around the side. Like, I'm a pretty thin person. Like, I'm very lean. But yeah, t-shirts just look baggy on me. I, I looked at these fitted shirts online, but most of them just look like kind of a... I don't really want to say, like, a scam, but, like, they se they're they selling you a fitted shirt, but then they're like, oh, tell us your dimensions? Buy a medium. It's like, no, you, you were selling fitted shirts. Like, that doesn't... I don't know where to find stuff. I know a couple of things that work on me. Like, I know Gildan soft style shirts fit my frame really well. But I'm like, where do I find... Like, you don't want to just get a bunch of plain shirts. Maybe I will. So that's when I just talk about my personal issues on stream. I can't find shirts that fit me perfectly. But yeah, there's something about finding the right fitting that shirt that just feels awesome. 
asking for fashion advice now. Uniqlo, Uniqlo are, is pretty good. I do like Uniqlo. That's not a bad idea. I'm not, I'm not petite. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> Lucky I found you last. Okay, here we go. The doctor is trying to. I had did a lot to you when I found you. Just wanted to let you know. Don't ask. I'm just helping you out. Uh, let's see. These melons should be good. I think we need to get down another four levels or so. We have enough other energy items. We should be fine in this mine. In the mine. The mine. The mine. Now that's going to give us the iron that we need. For God's sake, we're finally going to get some iron. Ooh, Carhartt is also good. Yeah, Carhartt. I did like Carhartt. Their stuff really holds up well. Gildan. Hmm. Same issue with pants. Uh, some of the pants you got to bring to a tailor. Like, I, I like H&M for their... They make very good pants, in my opinion. Or there's one type of pants by them that I really like. But they don't make it for thinner people. Which is crazy, because most of the people who go to H&M aren't like... I don't know about this. But yeah, like, all on all their ads, they're showing, like, these, like, tall, skinny dudes. And it's just, like, all the pants are made for, like, uh, like, thick boys. Which, nothing wrong with being a thick boy, but it's like, I can never find pants that fit me, because I'm, I'm very thin. Somewhat of a long boy. I have long legs. This is a, a funny story. Um, my roommate in college was 6'6", and I'm 6'2", and... We had the same length legs. He just had, like, a very long torso. So we could wear, like, the same pants. So we just did laundry together at once. But yeah, we, we should have made a volleyball team in that in that room. Uh, I don't know why we didn't. We weren't very athletic. But it, it would have been a great time. Um, actually, we could have made a whole, like, basketball team with that room. It's wild. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, down we go. Into the Iron Land we go. It seems like I'm getting better luck today as well. Daddy long legs, really funny. Well, I've also, like, I'm a big runner, but I've run with people who are, like, shorter than me, but they have the same length leg as me. And it's like, WTF, man. Like, there's these really fast dudes who have really long legs, but very small torsos. And that is honestly a blessing. It's not about... It's not about how tall you are, it's about how long your legs are. That's That determines your sport performance. <laughs> you know, you need like a compact torso and long legs. <laughs> That's funny. No, not really, like, big and tall stores, I'm still normal size, you know? Like, I, I fit into that. I'm not big and, like, big and tall, it looks like. You look like you're in some sort of Dickensian novel if I, you put on those things. Maybe I need, like, skinny and emaciated store. <laughs> Not really emaciated, though, either. Like, I'm in very good shape. I'm just very light frame. I have really small joints. So I, I can never find shirts, though, that work. Pants that fit. Waiting for... Yeah, it's funny, though. I mean, you know, maybe it's like living in America. Like, for example, they don't make... Uh, like, smaller waist, longer leg pants at H&M, which is why I'm just like, what? what? That's why I need a tailor. I should probably go to a tailor and stop being lazy. They also kind of shift around in size, too. Anyway, these are dumb problems to have. Here we go. Good. Eat grape. Take it. If I got an adventure good yet, might be able to find it. Oh, we did go to the adventure place. Um, I thought my weapon was... Or it got a little bit better. It gets better. Hmm, energy is slightly giving out. Though we're doing way better in the mines now, though. Better weapon, better food. Pretty much to the level that I care to be at. I mean, eventually we'll need to go even deeper, but... What is it all for? In the words of... What's it all worth, in the words of Lil Wayne? Hmm. Taylor. I didn't mean it. IRL. Community center bundles unlock give you the... Ooh, like the greenhouse and the minecart. 
Ah, oh, man, I want to explore some of the... The thing is that I want to automate the money-making first, you know? Like, let's get the, uh, let's get the farm itself automated. Because now maybe I'll end up doing 200 days, you know? I'm just like, this is kind of, this is kind of a cool game, you know? We could do another year. We'll just call it 200 days because it's a little over 200 days, right? Ooh, the slingshot! Hey, slingshot, slingshot. Um, let's put, uh, seaweed is... I'll just eat the seaweed. Hang on a second. Uh, yeah, that's fine. 200 days to... Yeah, we'll just keep on going forever. Until we've done everything in the game. I think it would be interesting. I love doing these games once through and then come back around and try to do it again, you know? Like, start off totally naive, not knowing anything about the game. And then you play it once through, and you make a lot of mistakes. And then the next time you play through, and you get another playthrough out of it. As a YouTuber, that's how I try to, like, fully experience a game. I I do really enjoy the game itself, and then I get to, you know, make a... You, you want to make a lot of content on it, and you want to kind of, like, be able to kind of trace your own journey through it. I did that in Kenshi with the torso stuff. Because that's, like, such a crazy way to play the game, kind of. Um, here we go. We're gonna get some iron on this floor now. Cool. Okay, we gotta get stamina. Stones in the slingshot to save space. Oh, cool. Oh, uh, hang on a second. How do I put the stones? Oh, here we go. Um, there we go. Oh, thank you. That's very helpful. I appreciate that. Cool, and we got another cave carrot, too, so that's a little bit better for energy. Oh, uh, what do iron nodes look like? I still haven't seen them yet, so I'm kind of, like, looking around for that. Um, hang on a second. Maybe I'll just... I'll wait a little bit, then I'll have the salad. Let's just mine out the rest of these rocks. What is it? 5.20 p.m. So we got some time left for the rest of the day. Crystals. Maybe am I horribly botching this? Oh, one on this floor. Oh, that's an iron node. Thank you. Okay, cool. We have some iron ore. Uh, I don't know how much we're going to need. I guess five if we want to start smelting stuff. So let's, let's head down then, I suppose. Maybe we'll see a little bit more somewhere else. If it's like kind of a whitish color, I guess we'll look for that. Maybe it's in the other rocks. Does it behave like copper or is it just in the nodes now, you think? Was copper like an easier, more plentiful resource to get? These enemies are significantly tougher, though. I'm going to need a better weapon. And better weapon. I am going to need and better weapon. I'm sorry, we're just covering grammar this week. I forgot the rule. I feel like 200... The first year is not enough. Like, the first year is like, you know, survival. Like, just fumbling around a lot. Second year is probably learning. And then the third year, you finally get a hang of it. Ooh, look at all the copper ore. Wow. Things get so much better when you get down here. Let me see what else is underneath the other rocks. Slingshot is worthless. Let me try it out, actually. I, I just kind of want to see it. I, I want to see how worthless it is. That does seem a little bit useless. Does it do good damage? Like copper, but silver. Okay. Oh, cool. I didn't even think I would get that. Uh, let's take some white algae. What is this? Winter root. Interesting. Uh, what can I throw out? What can I throw out? Uh, let's throw out... Um, actually, just put that on the ground. Let me just consume a couple of these things. Cave carrot. Manja. Nice. As they say in, in Italy. I don't know if they say that in Italy. This is what they say in New York. That's what Italians, American Italians say in New York. You know, one thing I'll say that I never, that I kind of took for granted about growing up in New York... I think I've ragged a little bit on the Northeast. I had my fair share of issues with it. But at the same time, there's no other place in maybe the United States where you would get to see people of every single different nation living all together in one city. And that was, uh, I, like my friend's dad visited and he had never been to New York City before. And he was like, he's, uh, he's not a young man, really. He wasn't an old man by any means, but, you know, like, he had retired and stuff. And it was funny to me to, for him to see New York 
And he was just like, wow, like, I just walked down the block and I saw people of every different nation, like, all standing together on one street. And I was just like, I kind of took it for granted, but I didn't realize how much of, like, a crazy place I'd grown up in. There's a lot of wonderful stuff about that, too. But, uh, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with it. Occasionally I just lapse in and out of my own thoughts. I'm still processing through a lot of stuff over the last couple of years. Moving to Florida was such a big switch. I don't regret it at all. I, I really like my decision, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, wherever you... You gotta go away from wherever you grow up in, I guess. Kind of see it all in perspective. See it all in perspective. How much iron do we have now? Hmm, iron, 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 Do tell me that it's... Okay, there we go, 10. I should be fine now. I don't want to lose it, so we could be careful. It's also 9.50 p.m. Let's actually just leave the mine right now. Oh, did I get down the other five levels? Ah, oh, I should have checked that before I did that. Very rash of me. No, I could have done it, but... Also, I probably need better armaments before I go down further. <laughs> I, I actually am I'm quite happy that people will rag on Florida because it keeps people who are like <laughs> like very <laughs> I, I I know I'm aware that it's a joke, but it's also like there is kind of a pretentiousness in many places and I enjoy the people are really nice here. I just like uh yeah, I just have found that people are very authentic and polite and uh there is some truth. I never really realized it when I was growing up, but about the, like, kind of mean New Yorker stereotype. Um, I always thought that was kind of, like, uh, just a bunch of talk, but yeah, there's something to be said about that. There's a lot more ball-busting, uh, among the people and the places that I grew up in, and how that is, like, considered camaraderie compared to just people being, like, genuinely authentic and nice where I'm at. Or maybe it's a factor of where I'm at in life, or whatever it is. Or just, like, maturity, or communication but yeah I've like I've found that a lot down here I'm just like I'm not saying that the south is like perfect there's a lot of issues but um especially when I encounter people who grew up in it that they want to get away from it it depends on where you go I'm also not really in like mm, there's something to be said about being in like the deep deep south the deep south it depends on where you go. I'm generalizing here. I don't really want to get into any more analysis. Please don't read too much into anything that I'm saying. I'm not talking about your situation. I'm talking about something that's specific to me. Don't, uh... Don't read too much into these things. Anyway, I'm just reflecting on my own experiences online. But I am but a mere troglodyte on the internet. Do not listen to me. Anyway, where was I going with this? T-shirts. Finding T-shirts. Really, the, the real quest in life is to find a T-shirt. Cannot find a t-shirt. So where did you guys say? Uniqlo, Carhartt, and Gildan? Where else do you go for your t-shirts? I haven't changed my clothes in Stardew in a while. Where else is good? Everpress. What's that? Yeah, I need, like, these good outlandish recommendations. Like, I didn't realize, uh... Well, one thing for me was I never had, like, uh... I never had running clothes. I would run in basketball shorts. I'm pretty fast, <laughs> so I just like run these. I would be out running everybody in basketball shorts, and then people were just like, "What the hell? <laughs> Who is that guy?" <laughs> there's something just intimidating about playing a sport and then not having any of the right gear for it, and just like <laughs> uh, ability and practice trumps all else. <laughs> oh my god, Burlington Coat Factory. Yeah, maybe I need to have a look around. What I really like is, uh... Some of the stuff online is good. Some good online stuff. TJ Maxx and Marshalls are a treasure hunt. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair... Actually, that's fair. Cabela's. Oh, Bass Pro Shops. Not bad. Not bad. I do like Bass Pro Shops. I'll say this. Like, my parents are pretty... Like, they, they are very urban, like, city-cultured people. 
I took them into a Bass Pro Shop. So they also have an outdoor side. Like they like REI and stuff like that. And my mom was so happy in Bass Pro Shops. She bought like the most <laughs> the most flannel item I have ever seen. It was surprisingly flannel, but yeah, it made me happy. It made me feel pretty happy inside. Female shirts are more annoying than male shirts to you. Oh, so they, really? Like, is it the sizing? Huh. I, it's, everything is so specific, you know? Clothing is made so generic. But yeah, I just found that like half of the shirts in my closet far too large for me. Maybe it's because I'm in better shape again. Where am I going with this? Uh, let's go ahead and start getting money working out for us a little bit better. I'm thinking we could spend a little bit more time wooing women, swooping among them, among us. Uh, we could probably pick back up our scythe as well. Let's also put away a lot of these like loot items. Okay, and then let's get the copper going. Uh, whoops, because why are we spending all this time doing this? But, but what? But for why? Costco, too. I liked, uh, uh, depends on what item you're looking for. There's some really good deals in there, too. Depends on what you're looking for. Depends on what you're looking for. Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. Yeah, maybe it's like concert t-shirts. I find that when bands make merch, sometimes you get like a really high quality t-shirt. One thing I would do, because I thought it was fun was working with merch companies. Some of them make really, really high quality shirts. I might just try to design some merch just for stuff that I like. <laughs> hey, this isn't even gonna have anything to do with AA as a channel or anything like that. I just got a shirt pitch I'm gonna throw at you guys and then we'll sell a shirt. Honestly, I kind of like the idea of it. I briefly entertained this because I was really into art a while back. Like who is it? Uh, I think PewDiePie has very cool fashion. With all the Japanese print on his shirts and stuff like that. Didn't they launch a whole thing? It's very, very cool. Very cool. Love a good t-shirt. Better idea than me. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to just, like, slap a logo on something. I think that would be... I think that's kind of boring. I'll just make my own shirts. I'll make my own shirt. One thing that would be nice about that would be quality control. You know, it could be like a philosophic. I would prefer a philosophical shirt, you know, something like that. I think everyone would like that better. Why don't you make a philosophical shirt, AA? You look very breedable, AA. I wouldn't put things like that on the shirts. Like you could wear it around in public and not embarrass yourself, you know, unless if that were highly requested enough, I suppose. <laughs> no, I won't be putting like, Insert whatever you think it is I would put on the shirt here. I could do another. No, I don't want to make another furnace. I just don't use it enough. Shirt that people cannot see. An invisible shirt. Why, I'm wearing a shirt. This is an invisible shirt. Well, the fun part is you get to actually work with the company and they'll send you a sample. The thing that would be annoying about that, though, would be if I worked with the company and they were like, I was just like, yeah, I just don't like the quality of this shirt, and then you just kind of cut them off there. I could just order other people's merch to see what who makes really good stuff. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Let's see who makes a really good shirt. You hate it when you hate to see a brand like when they have enough scale. You know, like lowering the quality of the good, which generally that happens as companies become more profit focused that at first they're really focused on the quality and everything like that it's just sort of the natural business life cycle you hate to see it but it is pretty much natural i suppose man this stuff is taking a really long time to cook so i'm thinking for the um for the sprinklers here we go let's put in another one for the sprinklers, so this covers a four adjacent tiles radius. So I suppose we could put this 
Can we put it like in the same place as the scarecrows are going? Oh, or you know what we could probably do? Something like this. Am I able to do this now? How much do I need? One copper bar and one iron bar. Okay, so I should be able to make this now. First off, let's put in a little bit more copper. Intrusive patterns, which don't stand too much and don't really, and only risk your brand to people who know them. Yeah, I think that's fair. No, I, I know, I, I think I'm a pretty good graphic designer. I mean, just look at, look at how amazing everything I make is. Wow, so amazing. Maybe it's something I'd like to do, though. Well, I, I think that's a good place to come from, though, is that I want to make something that I would want to wear, rather than, a lot of the time, like, merch companies will just contact you, like, hey, you want to sell something? Which is like, someone's trying to sell me something, you know, I'm not really into that, I don't, I don't really care, most of these things don't really even... Ten pieces of wood into one piece of coal, I don't really need that. I'm just gonna make the regular boy sprinklers. I don't really I like coming at it from that direction. So I guess if I put it like here, then that would get one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four. I would just have this one tile. I guess you're going to have some awkward spaces there. You know, I'm going to put these down. I could always just move them or remove them somehow, but I want to see how these hold up in these basic locations because I guess I'm going to end up doing... Just for right now, I'll put it here, because that's going to cover a lot of the crops. I know it would be better to just not have the scarecrows there, but I want to leave the scarecrows there. And then that way, we'll have like one awkward line. Let's see what that does, though, in the morning. For adjacent four scarecrows, one tile on each side. Are you kidding me? Oh, that sucks. I hate that. Wow. I thought that it did all four around it. Oh, that's not very good. I've spent the last three weeks trying to get a sprinkler, which is just kind of useless, honestly. Oh, man. I feel bad. I do, I feel bad. Oh, well, um... Life sucks. Life sucks. Well, anyway, then this was like a total waste, pretty much. Oh, well, uh... I learned. I am sad. I, but I did, I learned. Alright, these are literally the, the two most efficient places I could put these right now, so I'll just do that. Nah, it's not really even efficient, it's just kind of bad, but okay. Anyway, moving along now, let's just continue our soulless grind of making money. I am sad. Go to this community center, get good ones from the bundles. Yeah, let's do that then. We've been spending so much time in the mines. The mines! Holy hell, Jesus Christ, anger management just gifted 20 subs. Dang, dag nabbit. Jesus Christ, anger management, thank you very, very much. Gifting 285 now. Jesus, if you are getting a gift sub, please be sure to say thanks to anger management. Anger management, thank you for everything that you do for me. You are exceedingly generous, and I have said this before, but... I'm not going to give you my entire spiel again, but thank you, I am grateful for it. Hope you've been enjoying the videos. Dag nabbit. I hope that you, like, that the only reason that you're sending this is because someone is basically just, like, sending you dollar bills constantly and you don't even know what to do with them anymore. Because otherwise, uh, like, do put your, do put your own needs ahead of mine. I don't, I don't, I don't need it, but thank you. I appreciate it. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> the retaining stuff might be useful. Um, woman and community center. Now I'm like, I'm kind of lost. I felt like I had something there and now I don't. Let's go back into the community center and we'll try to see if we can get that, that crap renovated. It's KV. Thank you very much for the prime. Basically, that would be my job. <laughs> Sending me dollars. So then what should we do to renovate the community center? It's so old and cold, and so very full of mold. How can we get this place back into shape? Like, it, it looks like crap right now. 
oh, we do we go over there to the magical apple person? Or is it my high on pot news right now? Okay, I can't read any of that nonsense. There goes that magical apple man again. Oh, great. Interact with the magic book. Hit it? How do I interact with it? Oh, the next day I'll get the quest for now. Okay, awesome. Fantastic. Would I call myself a true gamer? You know, no, I don't think I I think I I don't think I would. I feel like uh I don't feel like I am a true gamer sometimes. Sometimes I get imposter syndrome. I don't really feel like I want to give this guy my iron bar. I mean, I already used it up, so never mind. No. Only when I put on my cat ear headset do I feel like maybe I might be a true gamer. Or I might have some chance at it. Now you're making... Well, the thing that I'm excited about is I felt like for a while there, I was so focused on making videos that I couldn't really... Like, back when my channel first started taking off, people had sent me, like, oh, you could do merch or something like that. And I was like, oh, cool, like, all this new fun stuff. But then I was like, oh, I just kind of want to focus on the videos, you know? And, I mean, it all comes back to videos. But it, you also you have so many other projects that you want to work on because a lot of people who are YouTubers are, like, kind of serial creatives. So I do have that in myself, too, and I, I, don't know, I wanted to explore more of it. Be fun. Yeah, maybe we'll make something. And then sell it to you. And they'll sell it to you. Haha. <laughs> Buy it. Buy it. <laughs> ah. I hate this. Okay, I don't think that this slingshot is any good, like, at all. I hate it. Put it away. Bat wings. There we go. The backpack, I think, was a worthy purchase now. Maybe I just need to look around more. Look around. There we go. Hmm, I do need the coal back. Because tomorrow I get the quest for the community center. Let's also go back to the blacksmith. You know, I think I wanted to be very, like, process-oriented for the beginning, but since the sprinkler thing didn't really work out, let's go ahead and just, like, um... Let's kind of focus on exploration for a couple of days, just because I felt like maybe... Yeah, I see what you're saying there with the sprinklers. Though that is kind of cool, you know? Now we've got something... The farm must grow. Uh, though I think more work than it was really worth. And look, now we've got a little bit of sprinkling going on, so that just saves us a little bit of energy or time throughout the day. Or maybe not. Maybe not at all. It would be kind of crazy to think of what you would have to do to totally automate it. But hey, you know, like, those are going to work for us every day now. And we, we'll start to have to, you know, plant our crops in a certain particular way in order to get them to work like that for us. But, uh, honestly, just lowering the number of actions I have to do per day in order to get everything taken care of so that I can explore other stuff is huge. Tier 2 sprinklers initially for some automation. Yeah, the, the Tier 2 sprinklers seem a lot more useful than these ones. You know, I probably should have waited those out. How, well, what are those for? Quality sprinkler. Uh, refined quartz. We do have that. The gold and the iron, though. Yeah, I think if we got gold, that would be good. So where do you find gold? Is that like on level 80 or something like that? That's a lot of spelunking. But I think that would lead to better crop patterns. Um, and that's maybe not so hard to do. At that point, I could probably even invest in another furnace. 60 and beyond, 80. And even have it look up. Well, either way, we'll, we'll keep going down. It kind of necessitates going further in the Adventurer's Guild, but now I, I do start to feel like maybe there's some opportunity in the next year at automating the farm. Like, I'll be done... I'll be done after year two. It's it's kind of sad to me that... But it's cool, though. Like, I, I like the idea of beginnings, and it would be boring if I were done with everything after just one year. You know, like, well, I did the whole game. Now I can kind of see why people get so many hours out of this game. 
just better to speed run the mines. Now I'm starting to appreciate though, like the, the value of all the kind of min maxing and the mic rolling, I think. Uh, let's see the fortune teller. Neutral, okay, so we have neutral today. It's not really a great day for the mines. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow, if we get better luck. Starting to appreciate every little bit though, the game now. Thank you, it, it does make sense what you guys were saying before. Hidden Glorp behind the starting house. Where is Glorp? What is Glorp? What? It... Glorp? I see no Glorp. My sources tell me you've been poking around inside the old community. Why don't you pay me a visit? My chambers are west of the forest lake in the stone tower. I may have information concerning your rat problem. West of the forest lake in the stone tower. Okay, so we have to go visit a wizard. Totally normal that a wizard would send us a letter. Glorp is a lie. Wasn't there Glorp already? I feel like we encountered Glorp, perhaps. Up till now. Perhaps Glorp was encountered by us. Just this game is incredibly beautiful. Can I say that? Uh, every time I open up this game, I'm just amazed by how happy the colors are. Like, if I were a sad person, and I were playing this game, I would feel good. I want to say I knew a lot of people who had played this to kind of like combat depression or something. It feels good. Okay, there's the wizard's town. <laughs> I guess I go down and to the left. <laughs> I haven't really been south of my farm yet. Now come to think of it. Oh, the art changed a lot? Since the early beta days. In the beginning, there was Stardew Valley. And Stardew Valley was good. All right, I guess Ask let's go this way. Where is your son? <laughs> hey, Nairai Shiro. Thank you very much for the prize. Oh, I should have come down here earlier. Look at me go. Oh, this would be the right place for plant fibers. It, it feels like there's more than I can even stomach in the whole game, you know? It has that kind of feeling of open world. Open worldedness. I guess everybody else has already played this game but me. It, it feels a little bit like. I've waited long enough. I wanted to play it for a long time. So I'll bring a sword into the wizard's tower. Oh, here we go. You're a wizard, Ambi. Come in. No, <laughs> just wizard is his name. Oh, there he is. He had his head cast down. I am Rasmodius, seeker of the arcane truths. Mediary between physical and ethereal. Master of the Selenium, uh, keeper of the sacred Cha. You get the point. Cha. <laughs> and you, AA, the one whose arrival I have long foreseen. Here, I'd like to show you something. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if I feel comfortable about this. Hmm. Okay, behold. Oh! He summons an apple man. Look, he's about to make an iPhone out of that apple. You've seen one before, haven't you? Yes. I thought I was high on pot news. They just call themselves Junimos. Mysterious spirits, these ones, for some reason they refuse to speak with me. They have attitude. I'm not sure why they've moved in the community center, but you have no reason to fear them. Hmm. Okay. Mm, you found a golden scroll written in an unknown language. Most interesting. Stay here. I'm going to see for myself. I'll return shortly. Okay, I'm interested in a wizard. Why is there a wizard living in the town? Like, why doesn't he bless the town with his arcane powers? Wait, if you are magic. I found the note. I'm going to help them. Jojamart is taking over the town. The language is obscure, but I am able to decipher it. We, the Junmo, are happy to aid you. In return, we ask for gifts of the valley. If you are with the forest, uh, then you will see the true nature of this scroll. Okay, so if I, I need to become one with the forest by saving the town. This is the main quest. Um, one with the forest. What do they mean? Sniff, sniff. Dude, I would not stand near that. <laughs> I, why are you just burning the wood floor directly below it? <laughs> like, 
bumbling butt magic. Exidem LG kit. Thanks very much for the sub. Cauldron is bubbling with in ingredients from the forest. Caramel told still, can you smell it? Hmm. Okay. No, I don't think I want to drink something that the mysterious wizard <laughs> offered me the first time that I visited his house. Ooh, 30 energy. Okay, I'll take that. Basically the Pokemon Center. Yep, I told you so. Looks like I'm gonna hurl. Everything is turning green. Oh, maybe I'm becoming one with the forest now. Oh, I, this is totally what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> what is this game rated? <laughs> M for drug references. <laughs> no, I don't think that this is weed, guys. This is this is something more than that. <laughs> Although it is trees, to be fair. <laughs> you gain the power of forest match. Fair, fair though, fair. I mean, literally trees. A fair guess. Betty Eric had this happen to him, and then he died. Holy shit. You've been gained the power of forest magic. Now you can decipher the true meaning of Junimo scroll. Okay, that was laughably easy to do that, I suppose. But now we're going to have quests from the book. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I feel like we can find enough sta stuff now. Wouldn't it be interesting to play this game with no farming? I feel like you could get pretty far through it. Just doing other stuff. Yeah, that is kind of interesting, actually. No farming. I believe Call Me Kevin did without leaving the farm. Yeah. I mean, you could play the game without leaving the farm. Or like only far No, it just it just kinda spins in my mind a whole world of challenges you could do. Yeah. I think it's no secret I really like the games that Kevin covers and I've always kind of wanted to do more stuff in that vein. I'd like to do a little bit more uh, variety on the main channel now that we've got some editors around. And work on a bunch of other different projects. But yeah, just like a little bit more agility switching between projects. I could role-play a farmer with farming anxiety. <clears throat> Books and stuff, too. I'm like, yeah, let's go around. I mean, you know, we don't have to make so much money anymore. I know we didn't really do very well. But I, I just kind of want to see what else there is to have. To be had. Okay, so back to the Pelican Town Community Center. And in here now, we should be able to understand what the anthropomorphic apple, apple wants from us. If it is an apple, that is. Oh, look there, it fades. Summer foraging bundle. Um, oh, cool. So, like, here's the things that I need to put in. Okay, one and two and three. I happened to have all three. That was pretty lucky. Um, so what did that unlock for me? Woo, woo, bridge repair. Reward, bridge repair. Oh, here's the reward. Oh, I just got summer seeds. Sorted wild summer seeds. Uh, honestly, I think that was horrible timing, probably, because... That was not good. I should not have done that. But I do think I have these things. Yeah, let me go back to the farm and grab these bits. So, what, like construction items, wood, hardwood, and stone. What else is there? Um, oh, I wish I had done a little bit of this in spring now. Okay, but winter, we will have some winter. And then the exotic, we do have some of the, or cave carrots we have. But the other ones are probably lower down to be had. Construction bundle we could do, though. So that gives us reward bridge repair. Okay, so what is this? Oh, the apple is carrying a present. Oh, and it unlocks a book in another room. This is kind of Super Mario Galaxy, don't you think? Hey, Wellington Skellington, how are you doing? Now check the book in my inventory menu. Oh, there's a symbol for it now. Oh, thank you, yep. Oh, that's very cool. I like that. Oh, wow, there's even more. You could get it. Ah, uh, so many unlockables. This is very nice. I really get the sense that I'm playing, like... A game that's ten times more rich in unlockables, even, than perhaps, like, a Nintendo game. You know how the Kirby games, like the Mario games, stuff like that, you just, you unlock so many things and it just becomes dizzying, the array of stuff that you can get? I really get so much love from this game. And that's no surprise to anyone, but... 
Like, damn. Like, that's bananas. Been a joy to provide you with the knowledge as you once did in PZ for me. Yeah, PZ, I guess, is another game that you could get lost in. It's fun for me to explore some of these challenges as just, like, a guest in them. I guess I did this kind of with RimWorld when I first played it. I remember when I first got decent at RimWorld, I just spent days... This was Christmas 2019. I got really into RimWorld on the channel. And, um... People were just giving me tips about the game left and right, and it was really useful because I, I just learned so much about it, and it was so much fun. Um, I, I just find that's the most enjoyment I get out of YouTubing, is just, like, learning a game and, um, yeah, like, go, going through it. And, um, I don't know, like, learning it. And then I, I often find that if I start doing it, like, more than five or six times, then it starts to feel a little bit more formulaic. Nothing wrong with it being a little bit more formulaic, but I love the part where I'm just learning the game in the first place. I think that's a lot of fun. Oh, you could buy gold ore. Hey, that would be kind of nice. This might even be more efficient than going down into the mine right now. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's just the ore. Let me just see if I can get one of these things. I'm literally just going to do this for the sake of time. Just so that I could get one of those bigger sprinklers out. I just want to see what they do. I mean, I know what they do, but at the same time, it's like, cool. Maybe not worth it, but I just want to do it for the sake of being kind of a completionist here. I know, I'm... I'm a bad person. I'm a bad... I am. I'm a bad person. I shouldn't have done that. That was cheating. Check the book. Um, cycle between the different books I've unlocked by clicking the little arrows in the menu at the top two. Okay, so can I do this? Pantry, crafts room, fish tank, pantry. Okay, cool. So as you go further, you unlock even more of the rooms. And then the whole community center gets better. And then I guess that's sort of like an alternate to going straight farming. So I was really going like the brute force way then, I suppose, right? Yeah, that's a thing. Put all the gold ore in the furnace. And then what is this? Man, there's just so much to... It really is like Animal Crossing, you know? I like that. I love Animal Crossing. Hmm. Now I'm starting to get so many different chests. I'm just sort of throwing everything all in one, but... Okay, let's get out some of the wood and the stones now. Hmm. Stones. Wood. Where did I put my hardwood? Oh, there we go. Okay, so now I can do this with the construction bundle. Although I do have to go back there every single time. Um. Hmm. Let me go ahead and put the hoe over here. Then. Uh, I'm afraid that if I walk away that the gold will just disappear. So I'm just going to stay here. I could do it with something cheaper like copper that I have a lot of. Or does it just... I presume that it keeps cooking. Like, the whole world keeps getting simulated. You know what? I'm just going to be a risk taker. I'm going to leave the gold in there. It won't disappear. Oh, awesome. Unless if you're lying to me again, of course. Oh, look. You weren't lying to me. I appreciate it when you don't lie to me. So many people lie to me. <laughs> I like the way that it kind of continues throughout the day. Like, all the areas are being simulated consistently? I don't really know what you would call it. But yeah, like, people will be walking out of a room, and then they'll actually appear on the other side. It's very neat like that. Starting to see the value of just saving more loot, but... Like, get some crops in the ground, but then go from there. Blueberries in the summer really seem like a great crop. That's a load of crop. <laughs> get it? Oh my god, wow. So can I just put these in here? I didn't even need to really come here, did I? Oh, wait a minute. Animal bundle. Crafts room. Yeah, here we go. Construction bundle. Uh, what? Oh, do I need to do the first one first? Wait a second. How come I'm not allowed to do this? Oh, I need to do it at the book itself. I can't do it from my main menu. I can check it from elsewhere, though. That makes sense. Okay, one. Oh, damn it! I have only 94. Hang on a second. Take it back. Well, let me just see. Is everything going to disappear? I counted totally wrong. Why am I so slow? I am smooth-brained. 
This game has very good memory. This game, this game is very honorable. <laughs> this game. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like stuff like that, where people come out of a house and then they they still appear in the world. This game has good honor. Hmm. Still haven't even been on the bus yet. I feel like years could go by in the game without even exploring simple systems and you're still engaged though. It's just so awesome. I love it. Stardew Valley, man. It, this is this is gonna make other games seem, I mean, it's not only a simulation, but a game, but also a whole world to be explored. It's a whole new world. I was having this conversation with my friend the other day. Apparently, she like breaks out into Disney song. Like, just at her computer during the day without noticing it. I feel that I am full of gaiety as well, so I, have, I should probably record myself one of these days because I have caught myself. Usually the things that I'm doing are I will either be singing a song or I will be yelling like, I will just be yelling F-bombs at the computer. <laughs> If I'm just sitting in a room alone <laughs> at the computer, <laughs> like just the involuntary noises I make, or I'm going like, oh. <laughs> I think you first find this out about yourself if you live with a lot of other people, like if you have a bunch of roommates and you're in college. You learn there's certain things that you do just alone that you probably shouldn't do. <laughs> It's a great game to play while watching. So, yeah, this is a game that you could... Oh, look, there he goes with the red present. So what will happen? Will the community center look better as I go? Construction bundle now. I guess that unlocks another room. And then I need to get the things in those rooms to unlock them, I suppose. So does this unlock the room itself? Okay, here we go. Reward? Oh, I got a free charcoal kiln. See, that's a nice way, an alternate way of getting resources without having to farm necessarily. I like that. Manual labor. Did I get it now? I think I got it. I wanna see what happens when the apple gets to the thing. Just come here with a crap load of my stuff. <gasps> no, I'm not really gonna do the fishing bundle. Well, let's see what's in here though. If this was the construction area. We probably have a lot of the construction supplies, don't we? Adventurer's bundle. Oh, we do have a lot of slimes and bat wings. Hmm. Oh, iron, golden. Yeah, we could totally do this. Um, actually, maybe I'll do this. You know, maybe instead of the sprinklers, just so that I can get that reward. Yeah, let's do that. Because we were doing the gold back at the house, but that might be a better way to do it. Kind of liking these quests a little bit better, like, rather than doing everything so systematically. Okay, there goes the reward. He put it into the, like, hut over there. Whatever that thing is. So then these are all the... What is the artisan bundle? We don't even have any of that yet. I don't know what that stuff is. Oh, you need really high quality crops here for this. Hmm, I could get some of that. Oh, so then this is also another incentive to grow all of the seasonal crops too. Now I think I'm starting to get that. I mean, we were making a lot of cash before, but maybe the goal isn't cash, but community. Nah, it's probably cash. Oh, this room fixes the minecarts. That's nice. Hey, so then you can get from place to place in town faster, right? That's nice. Okay, I'm st yeah, I'm starting to get it. The farm must grow. <laughs> Who originally said that? The factory must grow. Oh my god. Or is that just like... <laughs> I love that. That's such a fun thing. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like, Factorio... Farm Torio. We're playing Farm Torio right now. Factorio players. Is that just like a like a Reddit meme or something like that? I don't know where that comes from. I think that's funny. Or is that like how um uh actually I'm not sure I'm allowed to say this phrase uh and not get demonetized. So I'm going to just avoid saying <laughs> it is a name that people sometimes call Magic the Gathering. And 
I, it's like a bizarre thing that I never thought would happen, but yeah, I heard it happening to a friend of mine, and I don't want it to happen. So I'm not going to say it, but... <laughs> like, games have various... Various uh, other names that they go by. I will just say that. It's nothing bad. It's nothing bad. But, I don't know. The big brother is watching. <laughs> uh, all the time. There's nothing bad either. Well, now I've left you wondering. I just have so much self-control. You know, I think that teaching middle school was a good preemptive move before YouTubing. I've almost never had any, like, monetization issues or anything like that. But that's because I became so self-controlled at not cursing. Though there was one time that I hit my head in front of my class. Like, and it really hurt. So I yelled, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> like... It's one of those things. One of my colleagues dropped an F bomb once when she was teaching, like, like pretty impressionable young kid. It was a great story. It was really funny. Only one kid heard her, but like, he was like, "Oh, <laughs> it wasn't the right kid to have hear her either." It was really funny. Oh man, yeah, good memories. Oh my god, the farm must grow! The farm must grow! Yeah, but I remember I was pretty self-controlled with that, so when I... I did, I like audibly, I was like, ah, oh, crap! <laughs> I guess I must have been pretty, like, well self-trained, because I remember my kids went, <gasps> and I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like, that's not that bad. <laughs> but I guess it was just so, like... Yeah, you, that, that's the joy of teaching high school, is you can say things and have it not be like... There's so many things when you're teaching middle school or when you're in middle school where it's like, it's even funnier because it's not allowed to be funny. <laughs> Which is really a thing, like, things being funnier because they're not allowed to be funny. All my classrooms... Oh, holy cow! Yeah, you kind of got to get self-controlled. The left farm field is good for picking. Well, it's good because when I was like living in a, I worked in a bar when I was a kid, and then I worked in uh, a dorm when I was in college, um, or like a waiter when I was, you know, making my way through college. But yeah, no. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like I had kind of a bad mouth, and it didn't even really sound good on me. Like I don't have a voice that sounds good for cursing. Some people can curse left and right, and it's really funny. I'm not one of those people. When I do, sometimes it is kind of funny. But generally, it just doesn't... It just sounds kind of unsavory on me, the way I talk. So, occasionally when, like, you know, shit happens, it's funnier. I guess. Maybe not. Maybe it is. I'm not against cursing, but it just doesn't sound good on me. Also, if you're just dropping them left and right, it kind of kills the the power of a good F-bomb, you know what I mean? Yeah. Same as hearing your grandmother swear for the first time. <laughs> yeah, sort of. But my grandma, my grandmother said, said some crazy, she said some crazy shit. A train is passing through Stardew Valley. Okay, so what should we do here? With the passing of the train. Let's also get the gold bars. Now I'm kind of motivated. I want to... I'm big into collecting. Like, I like coin collecting, IRL. Um, uh, some of the most fun I had going over to Europe was just, like, getting the different types of euros and things like that. And they're different for each country. Like, Spain has its own stuff. And This is fun about going to the... Uh, the PDXCon era influencer convention the other year. We, everybody brought like a little bit of currency from their country. So like, yeah, like we all had a little bit. Like I got, um, I got some Kronas from uh, Bo and I got Swedish currency and I got a pound and I got a couple of like Spanish euros. It's very cool. Like you, uh, you guys have cool money over there. But here we go, rewards. Hey, another furnace. Oh no. Uh, oh well, sad. Very bad. Do we have to put this anywhere? I guess we should, like, keep going around and see what else is available. Oh, this is unlocked. Yet another room has it. Very, very cool. Very cool. Everything unlocks something else. There you go with the... What is in that package, really? 
can't tell. Enchanter's bundle. Okay, so this is more like fodder. There's so many avenues. You could go in this game for years and years. Man. I feel like the whole year is just like, what could you do? I just feel so powerless. You know, there's just so much stuff to be done. It's like... But now I, I wish that they had a little bit more of an indicator of what belongs in each book. Because each room I'm now like, what do I put in here? Is this summer? So is this summer? No, this is winter. Have we done summer foraging? Fall foraging. Did I already open this one? So those ones are already done. Spring. Where is summer? Exotic. Winter. Did I already do this? Maybe I already did the summer. There was one, though, with the quality crops where it was asking for a blueberry. So I want to make sure I get that one now. Summer. Oh, it'll be vibrating if you have something for it. That's nice. Okay, that's good. I like that. So it actually tells you where you could go in with stuff. A lot of walking around, but okay. Not against it. None of these presents are vibrating. When you hover items over your inventory, yeah, the subtle wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I swear to God, there was one other thing, though. Is there something, like, is there some type of indicator when I'm out in this room? Well, let me go ahead and just see in my, in my main book. Yeah, I've already got that. Boiler room, fish tank, crafts room, pantry. I want to say, where was the quality... I just swear to God, where was that quality crops that we just saw? There was just a quality crops that was asking for a high quality blueberry. I'm gonna go insane if I don't see it. Where the hell was it? Now I'm getting angry! No, it clearly won't be in the fish bundle. Ocean fish, specialty fish, lake fish, night fish. Where the hell was it? This is upsetting. Pantry. Wait a minute. Pantry? Where was the pantry again? This was the pantry, right? Oh. Oh, greenhouse bundle. Greenhouse. Greenhouse bundle. Greenhouse bundle. Oh, this is the craft room. No, the other one. Okay, this was the pantry. Ah, yes. This looks more pantry-like. Oh, thank God. Where are the quality crops? Animal bundle. Quality. Oh, but it didn't even have a blueberry in there. So I just totally misremembered the... I'm so sorry. I've really wasted a lot of time here. But now I think I get how it works. Just come in with a crap load of stuff. <laughs> crap. Alright, let's go back. Nice that you can buy stuff. You might just be able to, like... Um flip your way into getting better items. You know, you don't even have to farm them. You just buy the items that you need, I suppose, in a certain sense. Let's go back to the Adventurer's Guild because I feel like we have a lot of money now. $10,000. Um, this place is close. We could go to Joe Jamart. Yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and sell the berries at Joe Jamart just because I want a lot of money for the Adventurer's Guild. Or what is he going to have? Let's do it. I get so much analysis paralysis, though, and I feel like so much time is wasted just walking around the town now. Animals. Yeah, where would I go to get animals now? I feel like I'll just have learned everything. But, okay, let's just dive into the spirit of learning. Yeah, where are animals gotten? Selling to Jojamart. Yeah, maybe I'm a bad person. Everyone thinks that I... Hey, guys, it's a video game. I could, you know, kill everyone in town in the game. But it's, it's, not, it's not real people. It's a game. Stop judging me. I'm a good person. I just take out all of my insane, murderous aggression in virtual games. And somehow, this is fine. I don't know how to get over this. This is a rather, <laughs> like, ominous chasm. Why are there so many bones sticking out of it? Okay, here we go. Pirate sword! Hey, pirates! Ooh. Oh, this is way better. Holy cow. This stuff is good. Wow. Critical strike chance by 10%. Topaz, I do like the light on me. Um, combat boots, reinforced with iron mesh. Okay, this is fantastic. Let's get the combat boots. The mallet, Jesus Christ, look at that thing. Solid head, packs a punch, relatively light for a club. Um, plus three weight. 
What is plus three weight? Is the cutlass better or is the wood mallet? I'm assuming the wood mallet because it's more expensive, but... Uh, I mean, is white is weight bad for you? Weight is knockback. Oh, weight is always good for you then. Okay, good. Yeah, then I'll take the mallet. Level three club. Weight is knockback. Although this is considered a club item. Whereas the other one... Let's get them both. I mean, we got the money. I'm not really in it. I'm not in it for the money, guys. I'm in it for the adventure. Let's also just sell back our other sword, because that seems pretty useless now. Um, where is it? Steel small sword that can go back. Yeah, my other items before were crap. You were right. We'll take the leather boots. Oh, cool. It actually shows up on the character now. Hey, that's pretty sweet. I like that. Um, where is it? Let me put it in my main inventory. I guess you could make different inventories for different types of items, too. Can you get more, like, multiple tools? That'd be cool. Let me put these into the other one. Look at me walking around in my gray boots. Wow, very cool, very cool. Higher weight is slower swing. Yeah, I get that, get that. Oh, that's not such a bad thing, though. Yeah, I don't think I can really swing that frequently for it to be meaningful. I would rather have a really high damage item. Okay, let's go back to the farm. We'll sell this stuff. I wish I had a time machine now in this game. Time machine would be amazing. Amazing. Let's also buy a lot of food and health items. Let's go back to, um... Or we could just save some blueberries, maybe. Yeah, I'll save some blueberries. Those take up only one slot in my inventory anyway. Yeah, it seems like you need good, like, wide arc and a lot of damage. I mean, swing speed, swing speed seems to come next. That seems to be not as important, perhaps. Hmm. Hang on a sec, sorry. Just checking something. Okay, cool. Let's put in these high-quality blueberries. Maybe I could sell some of these, you know? Let's just put in, like, most of these. I'll save six for tomorrow. Or maybe that's not enough. Ugh, now I regret everything. I hate myself. Stardew Valley, the game where you're never happy and you regret all of your decisions. Let's put away some of these rocks, too. We don't need all these in our inventory. I'll just keep everything else with me. Okay, I got a free furnace without even asking for one. I have a kiln as well. I'm just carrying a kiln around with me. Jesus Christ. Nikoite. Does that... Does, like, a cat come out of it? Is that the Japanese word for cat? Neko? Does that mean that Neko wafers are made of cats? Spit them out. You're eating a cat. <laughs> hmm. Coal. I guess I could have sold the boots. No, I'm fine here. I'll save the grapes for tomorrow. Okay. I just... I, I'm always afraid I'll stay up too late. Uh, are you better off staying up just till 2 a.m.? I guess you don't really conserve your energy. I've probably wasted a lot of time just going to bed to do earlier. Stuff like oh, damn it! I forgot about the train! Oh, cool, my farming level up. Man, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. Hey. Vaughn44, thank you very much for the prime. An explosion was heard in the night. Did the train just blow up? This is... Ah, oh, it's so nice to come out to all of your fresh stuff. Farmer, my knee is acting up again. You know what helps? Rubbing the darn thing with hot pepper. Trouble is, I don't really have any hot pepper. It seems like it's useful to save crops from season to season, though, now. Beginning to kind of appreciate that. I, I personally have started to enjoy the dungeon delving, which is an aspect of the game I did not think I would enjoy. The farming gets a little bit repetitive, but I can kind of appreciate it, like in Harvest Moon, how, you know, you try to get 
like more efficient with stuff throughout the year as it goes. Honestly, I think when I started playing, I, I was thinking to myself, like, this game is just Harvest Moon. This game is like the Harvest Moon that they should have made. Or I don't know, I never played any of the Harvest Moons after the first one, so maybe who am I to say that? The original Harvest Moon, though, for a little history lesson, is uh, is one of those few... Super... Ah, oh, man, I already just... I just double did it on the... These sprinklers were just a total fail. Wish I had understood that before. Well, whatever. The original Harvest Moon for the Super Nintendo, I believe, was not produced in very high supply. So it's the reason why that game is like... It's like four or five hundred dollars, generally, it goes for right now. Um, on eBay and stuff like that. It's one of those few games that I did really enjoy for the Super Nintendo, too, so it's why I'm sad about it. But that and Earthbound I got on the Virtual Console for Wii U before the shop shut down. And I have no regrets about that. I just like him. Wanted to have him in some way. Plus, you also get to keep it on, like, a better, I guess, console, but... Yeah. Had Harvest Moon for Game Boy Color and re oh yeah, they made a bunch of spin-offs for uh, Game Boy Color and stuff like that, right? Or like uh, sequels. But they, I, yeah, those ones aren't quite as bad. I think some of them can get a little bit pricey, but we live in a wild time for game collecting. Food that helps with staying up late—that's useful. But yeah, we're getting to the point where like I have so many crops to water throughout the day that I need to consume some other good feel better I want to say it's I want to say that Harvest Moon is more expensive than Earthbound there's some titles for some consoles that are ridiculously ex ridiculously expensive like they just weren't produced in very high supply or stuff like that and some of them look like really interesting games too which is why I'm like ooh it makes me want it <laughs> generally speaking I'm not the type of person who wants like luxury items, but when it comes to video games, I'm like, I'm somewhat of a sommelier. I'm like, oh, the Pokemon games have hit $200. I must own them. Um, I was talking about this with my buddy. He's into collecting, like, the physical Nintendo stuff, so he got the Metroid release. It does start to get to be... It gets a little bit boring when you have, I don't know, like, a lot of them. But yeah, then it, some of them I can't even justify. It's like... I grabbed most of the Pokemon games before they really shot up. I mean, now it's like, it's getting prohibitively expensive. I think they'll still keep going up though, because when I hear children talk about what games they enjoy nowadays, they talk about Pokemon. So like, yeah, you might be able to fund your retirement with your copy of Pokemon Blue someday, you know? Well, my grandfather had a copy of Pokemon Crystal, so we didn't have to work for years. <laughs> oh, White 2 and Black 2 are good games. Those ones will, yeah, they'll be worth. Those ones weren't even made in such high supply. Yeah, I think it's, I think there's some games that would probably be like a horrible investment. Like a lot of things... Oh, Jesus, look at me go. I think generally the Pokemon... Well, really, Nintendo seems to retain its value pretty well. Hang on a second. Sorry, I'm getting a reminder. Oh, now the music has all changed. But yeah, I like that Stardew... Stardew seems like one of those games that really got a lot of love. Like, this is a game that almost could have had its own console release. And that's why, you know, I think the Switch version of these types of things will be really cool to have one day. So that's where, how I would probably pick up the game. Um, stuff like this in Subnautica, you know, where they released it for the Switch. We're coming into a whole new world of, like, game... Of gaming, I don't know. I wonder what it'll be like years from now. Probably everything will just be free, like the music industry, and this will be a silly conversation to have had. Like, people afraid that music wouldn't be available because of too many CDs. No, they'll just find another way to sell it to you. Uh, but yeah, they'll still want your money. And that's, uh, I think that's what's consistent about it. But you'll get more. I mean, like, gaming is so good nowadays. That you could spend literal lifetimes. It's frightening how good gaming is now. I gotta say that. 
I'm pretty much just trying to unlock deeper floors now at this point. Maybe I'll get a little bit of this. And uh, now I'm being a little bit inconsistent. No regrets about this hammer. This thing is great. If only I had better armor or something like that. I must have very good luck. To I forgot even to check the news. Yeah, I, I don't like the cutlass as much. That's not good. Or what is this? The Yeah, the pirates. The pirates booty. Ooh, you guys ever have pirates booty? It's a great snack. Very cheesy and puffy. Hmm. Although there's nothing really, like, particularly interesting about these dungeon crawls. You know, I was kind of regretting going so off topic the last time. I'm like, man, we should talk about the game a little bit. But also, like, they do kind of get stream of consciousness. I don't really like this game for long... I probably won't do too many long plays of this game. I wanted to see what it would be like for this one. Although I'm finding myself just kind of getting bored of what's on screen and then talking about whatever. I'm easily bored. Okay, here we go. Down. Woo! Another elevator. Mm, let's kill the enemies first. Yeah, Stardew's on Switch. They did a couple of them, like, even the Scott Pilgrim game they released. Stuff like that. Very fun, very cool. Oh, uh, we got something new here. I guess more flying enemies or something? I mean, that is what happened when I had to fight those, like, larva people. I hated them. You know how much I hated that enemy. That was probably my least favorite thing I've done since I started the game. Jesus, I'm stuck here now. I watched a video essay about how games are almost too long now. Like, you'll never be able to finish them. Yeah, it's like... I mean, games got cheaper and they got way more replay value. When I was a kid, if you got one hour per dollar you spent on a game... Like, I'll give you an example. When I was a kid, for me to spend 50 hours on a game was a lot. Like, you know, I, was, I had a lot of responsibilities. I had a lot of homework to do. And so, I think Star Wars Battlefront was like a really high value game back then. I think I got 50 hours out of it when I was a kid. Like, when I had pretty much played as much of Star Wars Battlefront as I cared to play. I, yeah, and it was like a dollar per hour. I'm like, that's a great deal. And my 12-year-old self. I saved up 50. It took me weeks to save up $50. To see this on the VOD channel. You playing something this wholesome must be awesome. Sorry oh. for missing the first two hours. Hey, hey Leo Roboto, how you doing? Love. Thanks very much for the 18 months. Yeah, probably gonna be putting it up as like some sort of mega VOD. YouTube is strangely, maybe not strangely, but not in a bad way, but it's been like promoting very long form videos I've found. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's related to their kind of like adoption of podcasting. But it's kind of funny, like all the stuff that I did, I'm like, man, I really like making all this really highly edited stuff. But I guess I'm just thankful to have enough people who are, like, willing to watch me, uh, just kind of futz around in the game. Maybe, like, 7 or 12 hours is a bit much. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, like, kind of experimenting with stuff, like, okay. How much can I make? I'm, I'm having a great time. I like doing these. I find it really relaxing. Although sometimes it gets, like, not... It gets to be a bit much. Obviously, for a mainstream audience of Fortnite gamers. Ooh, diamonds! We did find diamonds! Told you. Do a podcast. Sometimes I think I, I get too off topic in these. Sometimes it'd be better separated for that. I think uh, Nurse was talking about doing her own podcast. I don't know how that's going. I should ask her about it. Hmm. Check in on my friends from time to time. Yeah, YouTubing is a fun, it's just like a fun job. All your friends are doing like different kinds of experiments all the time, like with their content. It's like fun to watch other people. They're not really like, I don't know, I guess you don't really have any like co-workers or anything like that. But yeah, you make a ton of friends in it. Like I've made so many friends. Uh, there, Everyone is an internet person, but you meet all these international people. Like when you just put it down on paper, a lot of jobs are getting to be like that. Collaborative, creative, you know, developmental. I think, uh, you know, despite the fact that, like, the world has, you know, like, employers are kind of, I don't really have a 
full thesis on this yet, so I can't really say it. But yeah, I mean, we're coming into a world where it, I feel like it's going to be more of a gig economy, you know? Or more like the gig economy, where you'll do multiple things in a day, or until you, like, kind of figure out what your thing is. And a lot of stuff seems to be more self-led. I don't know, as compared with, like, the world where there was big pensions and, like, employers used to take better care of people, and now there's a lot of valid criticisms. Some people, like, immediately jump to UBI and stuff like that. I personally think... Well, I think it's, like, uh, Naval Ravikant had a really good talk on this on... Um, he did a podcast on Joe Rogan once. I don't watch tons of it, but I really got a lot out of that one. But he said, uh, yeah, it's like when they start inventing sinks, it's not like, oh no, we lost jobs for people who were carrying around buckets of water, like just new stuff was created. Although at the same time, we are at a point in civilization, I think where technology is evolving so fast that like, can capitalism keep up with it? Or like, can they keep pace? And that is somewhat jarring, I think, and maybe bad bad for a lot of people and that's not okay so like how do we man i'm like trying to i'm such an amazing person wow proposing solutions to all of society's problems anyway this is where my brain goes i'm just get kind of stream of consciousness when we do these types of things which is why i think that these mind spelunking adventures are perhaps too much maybe even for me to handle we're contracting for gig style work is huge where someone aligned with two to three projects at a time. Well, I mean, even that was like when I was bringing it back to the editor piece, like a lot of the people I was considering working with were like, oh, I just got a bunch of contracts from the person I do most of my work with. And I'm like, totally respect it. Like do whatever's best for you. If there's ever anything later on that you're looking for, then like, let's chat. I would love to work with you. Um, and like generally speaking, as far as editors go, I would love to find somebody I could work with like frequently because then it's less training them to learn to edit but also to you know people need like time to themselves and stuff like that too so just a thought but yeah generally speaking i think even like kids coming out of college and stuff like that might have more fun with like doing multiple gigs rather than one big job for one employer although that also can be somewhat toxic too i suppose uh, there's a lot more to it but yeah like more types of jobs. I think it's cool, personally. Kind of it seems like video gaming in a way, too. You know, you really get curated your own individual tastes. Though the one thing that you lack in a world like that is, is a very good sense of, like, community. Um, and I think people are finding new ways to substitute that for themselves. Like, I always get concerned when I get messages from people. Keep in mind that my entire audience is a lot of people who spend probably a lot of time on the internet. But yeah, sometimes people just seem kind of isolated when they'll message me or something like that, or ping me asking about something. And I, I do get kind of concerned about that some of the time. But also I'm getting kind of a biased data set when I read messages from people, or even just when I look around online. Corporate environment is generally toxic. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a good thing that's happening. It's just that there's like some sort of recession in a sense. What level are we on? You as I don't tend to watch Twitch, but your videos are both usually super interesting and help me sleep with your oh so calming voice. Much love from the UK. It's a very nice thing to say. Hey, Big Stevie, thank you very much for the 500 bits. Ah, the UK, where are you in the... Well, I don't want to get you give away, but I've like suddenly become fascinated with regions of the UK. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed the stuff. Oh, dang it. I went the wrong way again. Whatever, it's fine. I'll just go back the other way. I don't think it's that much faster, is it? It's a little bit faster. I could have gone the other way, yeah. I probably should have gone the other way. Oh well. People started getting paid to stay home. Oh, that happens in Alaska. They pay everyone who lives in Alaska just to live in Alaska. <laughs> they like took a vote. They were like, yes, we would like the money. And so, Alaskans get paid just for living in the state. It's not a ton of money, but I think that you could get, like, claims and stuff like that. Like, you could just have a clan of people all living together, sharing heat in a bed, and living in Alaska, colonizing the Alaskan wilderness. I'm probably way off with that, but I, 
I like the idea of it, so it's a fantasy that I entertain about Alaska. Among others. Maybe it's time to go to the, um... Maybe it's time to go back to the museum. The one thing is that the mine we could do year-round. We'll do the mine year-round. I feel like we're getting more stuff to do on every single day. Though it seems to me that getting further down that mine is really what so much of the rest of the game depends on. Kind of troubling. You, there's certain tracts, too, in the game that you could just do totally separately from the rest. Like, you could just do fishing. And you just fish every single day. And you'd still make money, but you wouldn't really get the passive benefits of farming. But I'm starting to kind of question whether farming is really a passive endeavor. The Dwarf Scroll. Didn't I... Yeah, I, I think I had Dwarf Scroll 1. I'll bring that over to the museum. First off, I'm going to bring some of the items here, and then I'll go to the museum. Good idea. I've already got that. I wonder why it keeps vibrating, even though I've already supplied the blueberries. This book is a lie. Nope, it wasn't in this one. Oh, yeah, winter, winter time for mine exploration. That's fair. Fair. It's almost like you would like winter to happen first, and then the other seasons... Although it doesn't, like, you know, Christmas comes at the end, so necessarily we want, we want to see Christmas. Oh, it wasn't vibrating when I had the stuff in my inventory. Okay, that is somewhat troubling. Uh, I don't believe I have fire quartz, but I do have an earth crystal back at my house. Okay, now I have to check through every single one because... Oh, I don't really need all of that. Okay, I can do this. Okay, here we go. Adventurer's bundle. We've got this one. Cool. I didn't even need all of that. I wonder what that gives me present small magnet ring Ooh, cool radius for collecting items increased oh, i wonder what happens when i finish the entire thing off very exciting we get all four dwarf uh scrolls. do we unlock gimli i love gimli 2500 oh you could just pay money oh look doo doo Okay, I'll take a bunch of chocolate cake, I guess. That's something. You get the five. Th oh, I should have done it with the 10,000. What do I get for this quality fertilizer? 25,000. Okay, let's see what's under. Yeah, let's waste our money. Lightning rod. Looks energy from turns into battery packs. Jesus, that's something. Look at all of the presents coming in. I'm just very excited to complete the collections. Like, I'm getting a little bit aimless, but I said I would be aimless at this point in time, so why not? Probably a bunch of my other stuff is worth money, too, in case if I had to panic. Let's go to the museum. Bring those over. Hmm. All right. Lots to do. Lots to do. It is a dizzying array. I, I feel, honestly, uh, if, I, if I put it into words, I, I feel somewhat upset when I play this game for the first year. I'm upset that I won't be able to do all the things that I want to do, and that's, that's kind of the main thing that's occurring to me about the game. I just feel like I'll never get to do everything, you know, and it makes me sad. Like, I... Sort of like... Like a life that you could never have lived. <laughs> Standing geode can be placed as a decoration. Oh, cool. Building for the house. Starfruit seeds. Oh, I wish I had had that before. I mean, we have tons of seeds for the next year. The second year must be crazy. I can even appreciate that in the second year, you're going to be encountering so much new stuff. That it's almost like year one is like a tour. Year two is like discovery. And then maybe year three, you start to get a hang of things. And then year four, you'd finally start to cash in, probably. But that is bananas. Pasta Patty says, You've been teaching high school and middle school for five years? Good for you, damn. Before changing careers, been catching up with the best. I think even if... Yeah. There's something... 
tricky about teaching where... I don't know, I almost left teaching with a sense of like, ah, I failed. I gave up. But I, I'm starting to see now more in my own personal life how it really paid off. I wonder what you do now. I wonder what, what adventures you decided to go on next. If you're comfortable sharing. I don't want to freak you out, though. Um, standing here. Let's put this around. Oh, look at that! That thing does not look like it would really get like <laughs> Kind of cool, though, that I'm finding... Uh, suddenly, I'm going to have a big audience of, like, teachers. <laughs> fellow, fellow former teachers! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> How are you holding up? <laughs> That's cool. I wonder if it really does anything for us, though. Magnet ring. Um, I kind of like the weapon precision better than the magnets, I suppose. Year two years ends up where your industrial farming complex gets off the ground. <laughs> oh my god. People are talking about AI being the copycat thing. I don't really know about this. See, somebody sent me, like, a copy of how ChatGPT could do the script for one of my videos. But the one thing that I think it still lacks is, like, one of the most difficult things for people to get creatively. And that's a sense of comedic timing. Like, a lot of the editor applications that I got for when I was testing people for the channel, had at least a small sense of comedic timing. I'm gonna go ahead and say that there's still, to me, something very mysterious about getting a good sense of comedic timing. And I think it's something that's probably gonna be... Some AI can do it. But when that kind of technology comes out, yeah, it is gonna be freaky. But yeah, I mean, it should be. Whoever can adopt the technology. But then you have too much content out there. There's already too much content on YouTube. More than anyone could possibly consume. You're really just fighting for eyes. But they kind of looks at it in this competitive way. Like, I don't... I just kind of look at it from a creator's standpoint of just joy. Can't I just have joy making what I like to make? AI will, tell, will kill us all. No. Well, probably, but, you know, maybe not in our lifetimes. Human intelligence is just pattern recognition. How don't you know that it's not, like, um, biology? I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, probably AI is gonna, like, you know, take over society. Oh, well, not yet. Maybe in a, maybe in a couple of months. <laughs> we got a few months left. Uh, I feel confused now. I don't know what to do. There's just so much stuff to handle, and I feel... Like, dizzy from it. I guess I want the crops. Well, let's start to think about animals. Where do I get animals? Yeah, when in doubt, fish. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Just take a little bit of time to go fishing. I feel like we could fill up the rest of the thing. In the meantime, we'll talk about animals. It really just feels like glorified killing time. What I've done here. I, I feel bad. I feel like I could have done better. I could eat the... Like the poop that I picked up. Just don't even think I'm gonna need these. Not gonna need that. That's kind of a waste. Not even sure I need the tundra boots. All this stuff, I don't want to get rid of everything now, though, that I've seen out. Now I have two of them. Jesus. I'm such a loot goblin. <laughs> I must touch it. Bought from the. But Marnie, south of the farm, you build a Cooper barn via Robin's Carpentry Shop. Oh, yeah, maybe I should have done that instead of spending all of my money on, like, just a random gift. Like, ooh, a solar rod. No, I should have got a farm expansion. <laughs> it's just that everything that the game presents to me, I want. It's very nice, like that. At least I'll get more fishing experience. Yeah, it would be fun to get some animals around, though. You know. I suppose you need to... Do you need to feed them or do they just feed themselves? They just eat grass. The fishing is the one... Pursuit that doesn't really seem to get much easier though. 
Nor is it like something that you can really tell it. It's just like a... But the game kind of needs one thing like that. Here we go. And now this time, instead of selling them, I'll bring them back to uh, that place. Ooh, perfect. Nice job. Wonder, do you get any like bonus when you get a perfect thing? Or is it just... Oh, need a silo. Yeah, I do believe you needed that. Wasn't that in Harvest Moon as well? Yeah. It might be better to just get crops, which don't which aren't so needy. Do that first. Hmm. You know, I gotta say, uh just reflecting back on the teaching thing, for like years I felt I felt crazy. I felt like uh it's been a really nice response that people are just like so positive toward teachers or former teachers. I felt so bad for years. I felt like, man, I really messed up. I, I gave up. But I learned this about myself recently that like I have a very, it's, it's not really a good fact about me, but I always felt like a, a massive sense of guilt that not everything I was doing was like perfectly self-sacrificial. Um, I don't know if it's, like, a Catholic thing. Like, I was raised Catholic. Um, and I, there's a lot more I question now. Because, like, a lot of the teachings... I don't think it's really reinforced that you should go do good for the sake of itself. It's sort of like... The fact of the matter is that, like... Any religion that sort of tells you that... And this is just my opinion here that doing good is for, like, a merit or a reward. Like, oh, we will forgive your sins. Or, like, oh, you will be rewarded in the afterlife. Like, what the hell is that? Like, why not just do good because it's good? Like, even, um, Buddhism, uh, like, in order to get enlightenment, you sort of need to, like, give up everything. And it's more just about savoring. It's not just about getting rid of, like, material possessions in a way, I suppose. I don't really know what it is. Um, but yeah, that comes out of Hinduism, and Hinduism has the whole caste system, and that's not so great. There's wonderful things about it, too. Like, there's a lot of kind of capital T truths you can get out of those traditions. And I don't mean to just, like, you know, dismiss entire religious traditions, but uh, I guess I'm just saying for me it was kind of crazy. It's interesting, though. Yeah. Motivate people to do good. Yeah, but the problem is in the original motivation itself. That, like, if you motivate people with an end, it'll just kill the whole process. Like, what is the value of the process? Or maybe that's just the way that I thought about it. It's interesting, though, that you say that, because it kind of reminds me of Dostoevsky's uh, Grand Inquisitor from the Brothers Karamazov, where, like, the people are kind of deluded into doing the good things while the Grand Inquisitor is the one who, like, takes all the guilt on himself. It's really interesting. You should read some Dostoevsky if you want to get into, like, these... Denis Diderot is also really interesting. Um, though I did really like that. I like that about studying with the Jesuits. They were really, like, intelligent and just all around with, um... Oh, cool. Now I can pretty much stay up the whole day, like, just working. Some of the traditions I really learned a lot from, too. But I also think it made me just, like, I'm not going against everything. I also think this is where a lot of Western culture lay. So it's sort of like, to just totally ignore the influence of stuff like religion would just be to basically ignore the entire history of Western culture. <laughs> like, a lot of it is just a bunch of, but it also did hold back stuff like technology in many ways too. So that's not great. Like, think of Galileo, for example. How awesome Galileo was. Wonder You wonder what our society will do next, though. The explosion that hit my farm the other day was a meteor. What the hell? This entire wood. Remember how we cleared out this entire thing at the beginning? What a useless task that was, because now it's all grown back. But I like it. It feels organic. Now everyone's going to AI. I thought we were talking AI. AI will take over everything. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go back to that other uh, place and turn in some of these fish.
some Eastern thoughts tend to be. Um, maybe it's because you. Maybe it's because most of us probably grew up in Western traditions that Eastern ones seem more pragmatic. I sometimes think, or maybe they do. Confucianism is very useful. Like Taoism is pretty useless in the everyday, but it will tell you all these truths about, like the meaning of life. Confucianism is. Is Confucianism? I don't really know enough about Chinese philosophy to say, but studying it was interesting. I was like, ooh, yes. <laughs> like, that is a fascinating way to look at this. <laughs> hmm. She sells seashells, but she can't find a job. Net fishing. Wait a minute. Net? Oh, night fishing. Lake fishing. Ocean fishing. Here we go. Uh, I regret that this one is so high value, but... Whatever. That's some of the fish. Some of the weird fish. This is a very nice red snapper. I would call it a red snappist. <laughs> Get it. I hope, I bet you do. You know, I, I don't feel like, I think maybe you're right. Maybe we didn't need all of that. But at the same time, I think I'm starting to appreciate the fact that Almost no matter what path you take in this game, you would regret whatever you didn't do. So you're you're almost better off just going all the way in on one thing. I tried doing that with farming crops, though, but then it, it kind of all fell apart because I felt like, you know, there were so many other accessory things I needed to do. Like, oh, if I want to get more crops, then I would have to do this and that. And I didn't want to just spend the entire time watering crops, so then, like, life happens. Life does. It happens. Life do be that way sometimes. Let me sell my fish. No, this fish looks good, but I'm selling it anyway. And then these things are nice, and I don't want to get rid of them. Rich and moist with a thick fudge ice. <laughs> Delicious. Anytime someone describes food as thick, I suspect that they, <laughs> they think more of the food. Oh, yeah, this food. Are you aroused by the food? Thick, luscious food. Wait a minute. What kind of food are we talking about? Hmm. Hmm. Here we go. No, oh, I keep putting in the copper. Cool. Yeah, I'm not judging. I'm just... When did I judge? I, did I never said any good or bad things about it? Everyone, or maybe I do sound like a, like we had done a, a multiplayer recording and someone said that I sounded like I'm just a jerk for the entire time. To put it nicely. Although the issue that I have with multiplayer sessions is sometimes when I'll go in with friends to record something and people are too constructive and nice. Like, you need some people in a multiplayer session who are being nice and helpful. But you do need so Oh my god, that thing is huge! You do need some contention in a multiplayer session, otherwise there will be no conflict in the video. Maybe I'm just reading too much into YouTube comments. Alright, some people just hate... Like, there are people who are wonderful creators and people will say like, oh... I hate this person, they're annoying, and it's like, I love that creator, though. Like, why would you say that about that person? <laughs> like, I'm talking about widely celebrated crea- whatever it is. You can't make all the people happy all the time. Okay, we got just got James and the Giant Peach. This thing is huge. This is amazing. What a cool moment. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that was the meteor from outer space. It's an irradiated one. How do you- how do you get it out of the ground? Which tool do you use? Oh, is it the axe? Can't use the scythe, right? Yeah, that seems to make sense. That thing is huge! Look at it! Jesus Christ! I gotta make a note of this. Holy cow! Holy melon! Me melon- Melonsaurus. I wanna take my photo with it. And send it to the county fair. Jesus. That thing is crazy. Look at the size of that melon. <laughs> I love your melons. Wow. That's amazing. Melon top. 
me just get rid of the rest of these ones. That thing is incredible. Totally worth it. I'm so glad that you told me about that. I'm glad we got it with at least one of them. So is it worth the same amount? Are you supposed to sell it at the store? Can I bring it to the store? Can I even lift it? What are the available options? Sell it for a million dollars. A million dollars. <laughs> Man. Produces a bunch more high quality melons when you break it. Oh, cool. Okay. So it doesn't come out as just like Melanopolis. There we go. Cool. I like that. That's very fun. I love Easter eggs like that in games where, you know, just something you totally don't expect. I might not have discovered that if I had just been playing on my own. So this is one of those areas where having Twitch chat really comes in handy. This is so cool. There we go. Okay, down with the... Wow. Eight high quality melons. I do think I need to donate one of these to the museum, right? And then after that, we're gonna get our money back and then we could pay Robin to, you know, help us out. Wait, isn't it? Oh, five high quality. Why is everyone upset? I destroyed the melon. Should I have just left the melon there? Guys, summer is going to end in one day. That would have been irresponsible to leave the melon. Give me a break. You t I tr we tried to do something nice for once, and then everyone just gets upset. No, don't break the melon. I like the melon. You guys can go to hell. Jeez. I will do none of the things that you're asking me to do with the melon. That would be... I would probably get delisted from the internet if I did that. Pantry. Okay, here we go. Spring crops. Where's the summer crops? Summer crops. Summer crops. Yeah. Put in the low quality melon. That was a low quality melon that you gave me. I didn't appreciate that. Don't we do have the quality crops? Okay, here we go. We can put in one of these. Cool. What the hell? Wait a minute. No, why did it get you? Oh, it needed five. Okay, never mind. Well, it was worth it. Whatever, that's fine. I'll allow it. Oh, were those yams there? I think that was yams before. Either way, we need money now. I'm leaving. Though this place is great. Yeah, it was a bundle. I thought it was just one quality crop it was looking for, and I accidentally put in more. Uh, did I say museum? I meant the, t the city center. I mean, it's for some city center, almost no one ever goes there gotta say how much money does this guy have Pierre what's this yeah Pierre he's got a lot of dough but he inherited the business I'm putting away the chocolate cake man doesn't require a cake for energy you never see people at a gym working out like oh I'm out of energy I need to eat more cake <laughs> wouldn't that be funny you go to a gym and there's just a bunch of like bodybuilders Eating cake. Ah, uh, now I have the energy to lift more weight. Ah. Strong boy. <laughs> the memeiest gym. The gaming gym. I think I want to bring that crab back. Um, what am I doing with Robin? You know, I think I need more wood, but then I'm going to go over to Robin's. I should have gone over there before. Let's just go find out what Robin needs, because I've got 21,000 G. The uh, mysterious cryptocurrency G that everything has now been designated in the New World Order. Not Ethereum, not Bitcoin. Just G. Hmm. Where is Robbins again, though? I believe she lives north of town. Who are you? Demetrius. Do you know her whereabouts? Strigley. Okay, I don't know what any of the things you just said. Right over my head. Onward we go. Where is Robin? Does she leave her house? Good. 
You know, she's managing her business. Okay, construct farm buildings. 10,000 G and five, 450. You are a lumberjack. Don't you bring your own wood? Bring me the wood. Idiot. Construct farm buildings. Okay, a coop. Oh, nice. Cool, coop. Um, what else? Move buildings, demol demolish buildings. Oh, cool. So this is where we would get the, um, houses for coop dwelling animals. So can we get anything else, or is it... Add a kitchen. Okay, so we could do that. Hmm. I think we could do both, probably, right? Four, only 4,000? Wow, if I had known that, I probably would have constructed these long ago. So let's just get tons of wood. We'll get like a 1,000 wood over the next day or so, and then we'll come back to Robin. And hopefully we'll be ready for some action. I also have a crab I want to put into the museum. Now I'm just sort of completing various tasks, though, I feel like. Um, who wants the crab? Who wants the crab? Crab. You get crabs, and you get crabs, and you get crabs. <laughs> no, I said her name is Rob. I didn't say I was going to rob him. I said her, her name is Robin. You misheard me. Listen better next time. <laughs> that was good. That was funny. I see what you did there. There may be the people who say that I'm, like, very abrasive. Well, maybe I am very abrasive. Maybe I'm just trying to avoid the fact that maybe I'm an abrasive person. I think it's when I, I'm around other people. I, I was saying this to a friend the other day that... Um, what is it? Like, we were just talking about people's different communication styles. And I said that, or this person said that they like it when people compliment them. Or, like, it means a lot to them when they do that. Or there was, like, a, a quiz. Like, some people, in, it means a lot when you spend time with them. Some people, it means a lot when they, like, when you, like, say something nice or affirm something that they did. Like, hey, I'm proud of you for blah, blah, blah. But I actually, I kind of didn't like that communication style because I always feel like it, it feels kind of Dale Carnegie. Like it feels like win friends and influence people when you try to compliment people. Like you're looking to score points with them or something like that. You know, you're not really giving them any of your time or resources. You know, so that's what means a lot to me. But I don't know if that's just me. Um, another one would be like some people like to give gifts to other people. And that is like, shows that they, you know, that that's something nice to do for someone. Or I always, th I think people mostly think it's the thought that counts. But I took issue with that one too, because some people just have a lot of money, you know? Like, and they, they can give a lot of gifts. Or like, say for example, I don't know, if you had a bazillion dollars and you, uh, no, this is not really a good example. Hmm. Yeah, I guess kind of like back to the, all right, here I'll go to a biblical story. The story of like the rich man who gives gold to charity. Like, and everyone's publicly making teeths to the church. And then there's the one like poor old woman who gives like, it's a poor, it's always a poor old woman <laughs> who gives like one copper coin or something like that. And like the, um, what is it? The moral of the story is, uh, <laughs> acquire currency. <laughs> no, the moral of the story is that, like, it's, it's, like, proportional to what you are capable of giving at the time, I suppose, or, like, whatever energy of yourself. It's interesting, though, to think of that. Anyway, the reason I think I was so abrasive, though, is because I find it's, like, I feel like it's inauthentic to be, like, so complimentary to people I guess but then there are other ways like I think one thing that keeps multiplayer sessions going more I'm finding now is like just asking people about their plans but also like I don't see why people it's in the context of comedy I don't see why people are like trying to judge people's personalities in the middle of it but yeah it's like comments like that make me think like am I doing am I doing it all wrong you know but I do like read them from time to time and then some people just hate everything on the internet that's also a thing. This was a great blueberry harvest. Wow, this was such an amazing crop. I'm very happy we did this. Give one hand and not let the... Give with one hand and not, not let the other hand know. That's it. Yeah, I like that phrase. That's good. Jainism. Don't be poor is the lesson. 
<laughs> oh my god. Something like this. Yeah, like a love language kind of thing. Appreciate quality time, but I found my relationships have improved now that I'm less sting stingy and I tell people I appreciate them. As it, yeah, it can be uncomfortable to tell people that you appreciate them. You know? You kind of need to follow through on it with your behaviors. But I find that in the context of like... Sometimes when I'm speaking with people that I know really well, you can have an entire conversation in sarcasm. And like, it's perfectly understood. And it's actually almost insulting if you don't. You know, like, why would you be so... It's almost like you don't know me enough to be afraid not to kind of bust my balls a little bit, so to speak. This has been an extremely lucrative year. I think we can get that, uh, all the stuff we need now for the expansions. I just gotta get my energy for the rest of the day. I can eat blueberries and cut down trees. Ah, it's like Maine. Yeah, something to be said about not making a public display of it. I think that's fair too. Yes, that is that is also another part of it. Or maybe that was maybe that was the moral of the story. But also too, yeah, like say for example, well, uh, this is this is interesting with people and how much like time and energy they have to give. Like people born with more are at liberty to give more, but despite the fact that they do give more, Sometimes they might not necessarily be more inherently giving than people who are born with less, but it just might be that they have more resources to dispose of naturally. Does that make sense? Like, that if someone who had less had gave something of lesser value, but it was still... I don't know, yeah, like, it's just interesting to think about. You can't really ever come to any perfect formula, but... I think it helps to just understand people's values and ask them. Or, like, don't don't jump to judgment so fast. But, yeah, like, as far as multiplayer sessions go, it's boring if there's no contention in a multiplayer session. It's sort of like, I feel like that when people leave comments like that, they don't really get the art form of, like, creating a good multiplayer video, if it is an art form to be had. Like, for example, I think that a lot of the videos by the Misfits are very funny, and they're always arguing in them. Um, they aren't really, like, as up-and-coming as I guess they were before, but they would be an example of a group of people who are really good at making, like, um, you know, just, like, laugh-out-loud comedy videos on YouTube, and whatever you think of them, um, if you think, like, some people think that the jokes are too edgy or whatever. I personally, I think that, like, it's just, like, you kind of relinquish that when you start watching the video, you're like, okay... It's kind of like going to a comedy show and then getting offended or something like that. Yeah, but I, I, I feel the same way about YouTube, that it's sort of like, it's lost on people. It's a very small minority, but maybe it's just that I don't have a thick enough skin. It's like I, uh... Yeah, sometimes I read into those things, and I don't, I don't think it's healthy to. I think it's good to be self-critical, but it's also good to just understand the medium that you're working with and why you do the things you do. Because you do get it to a point in YouTube where it's like, okay, I can't make all these people happy anymore. And there's a lot of people who hate everything that I make now. Or they think that these are too slow, and they think that the videos on the main channel are too fast. And it's hard to find a middle ground, so I just make a lot of different types of things now. And understand that people will segment themselves, and like... I should do what I enjoy, I guess that is to say. Either that, or you just have to do one thing all the time. And that can get kind of boring. Like, if you just make one thing all the time, I just make five-minute videos. I just make ten-minute videos. I just make memes. It gets... that starts to make you feel like a factory, which is why I've tried over the years to do a lot of different things. It's funny how, like, so many of these things just, uh, come to light. As, as you get... as you just think of, like, the nature of whatever it is that you do. I was correct to say a story I heard. A bunch of rich people were showing how much they were donated to a charity by putting the coins in it, and then a poor lady comes up and drops all her coins in at once. It shows that it doesn't matter how much you give it, it's the thought. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, it's the thought. It's the thought that counts. I mean, like, you know, over-analysis of simple truths. That's fair. Maybe I'm over-analyzing it. It's just kind of funny, you know, you learn a lot of these things when you're... There's a little proverb in Confucian philosophy that, like, the best type of person can learn something through study. 
the second best type of person can learn it through hard work. And it's sort of like, it's framed as this classist argument of like, oh, like the rich man can afford to pay for classes. Like, and so he learns by that. But I think that it's like, if you can learn something just by reading it and understanding it and appreciating it, and you don't have to go through the pain of actually experiencing it, um, you might be better off. You might not remember it as easily. <laughs> I've just learned that through my own experience. But like, uh, you know, you learn all of these morals when you're a kid and then you go kind of like, uh, like, but is that yeah, them just telling me that? Like, is that really? But then when you see people's relationships and the way that they play out in real life, like when you make more friends, encounter new people and situations, you do start to kind of appreciate the value of like moral teachings that you get as a child. And that some of them also are totally messed up. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, some of them are completely messed up and just like wrong. Uh, but yeah. I suppose for me personally, because I had like a very kind of religious background in school, that stuff was always sort of coming up and I kind of took that for granted. Although maybe that, I mean, that's obviously not everyone's experience. Obviously? Because I'm so self-aware. <laughs> oh, damn, you're right. It is the last day of the season. Ah, I forgot about that. Thank you. My bad. Money isn't an issue anymore, really, for us. We're just kind of like vibing through the seasons. Here we go. I'm gonna save maybe a blueberry or two. These things were useful, but not forever. Okay, uh, in we go, in we go, in we go. And what were we gonna do? We were gonna do the house upgrade, right? So we have 609 wood. I think we need a little bit more. Let's save. Maybe, uh, five is probably not enough. Eh, let's just sell them all. I want a good catharsis. No more blueberries. Okay. Be gone. I should have done that with the spring crops, though. Oh, you know, even a greenhouse might have been useful, but we could also probably harvest the seeds later on, too. Oh, I just get so much analysis paralysis. It's gonna be so annoying to watch. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I could do this. Just my head is taken in a million different directions. I say more wood and then we go. Have anything that can restore energy now? Melon. Pretty sure we put all the melons in the places where melons are needed. Oh, I had algae there too. Save one of these good ingredients for that soup next year. Next year when there's an opportunity to redeem myself. <laughs> If I take the battery into the tunnel west of the bus. Oh, thank you. Let me go ahead and do that. I had no idea where I could do this. Cabinet you can open with the battery. Thank you. That's a help. Thanks, DJ. Uh, weast. The tunnel west of the bus. Okay, so we go in here with the battery. Man, there's a whole new loca locales. Locales I haven't even explored yet cabinet you could open with the battery. Oh, right here? It worked. The lockbox swings open inside. There's a note. Your first task, bring a rainbow shell to the train platform. Leave it in the box. Mr. Key. Hmm. Rainbow shell to the train platform. Okay. Very mysterious. This kind of reminded me, I don't know what, it gives me like earthbound vibes right here. So many more secrets even than in, than in the original Harvest Moon. That's very cool. Hey, DJ, you've got... Like, thank you for all your specific knowledge on various games. I think I've given... What was it? Which one did I really give you? Was it, was it Zomboid or was it Kenshi, I want to say? You've helped me with all the games that I really want to learn, though. I appreciate it. You've always been there for me, DJ. I just wanted to say here at my retirement party how much I appreciate you. I'm going now. I'm leaving. Turn into Bilbo Baggins on you in the middle of the stream. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, was it also Rimworld? Ah, fantastic. Yeah, PZ, Rimworld, and Kenshi would be the three I, I kind of knew. Though I guess Kenshi, I... 
Man, when that guy Frankie was here came into the stream with his like Kenshi speedrunning stuff, man, Kenshi just took on a whole new life to me, man. That was crazy. That guy's techniques were insane in Kenshi. Because that game is the most exploitable game I've ever... I've ever played. It's insane, the stuff that you can do in it. Very, very fun. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking to do another Kenshi video soon, too. Now that we've got the editors around, I haven't really circled back around to Kenshi. Because... There is, like, a finite number of ideas you could do with it. It's not like RimWorld, where you could just keep going forever. I wonder what my levels are at now. Like, one year in, what are your... What are your levels like? We're not one year in yet, but... Okay, our farming is getting up there. Hmm. That's a help. Cities... Yeah, The Sims was a real help. Ah, yeah, the city skylines, too. Stardew I didn't know was one of yours. Oh, Stone Shard as well. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff I want to do with the VODs, too. My main thing is I want to get back to, like, one video a week on the main channel. And then once I've got that, then I'll feel like, okay, then I can start to do more VOD stuff. And just... Yeah, just years of envy of other creators. Anyway, I'm like... People who can... Who are a little bit more agile at pursuing so many projects at once. That's great, though. I've got the rest of the videos from the editors uh, in trial today, or in audition. And yeah, like, I'm excited to review them. And it also takes a long time to give people feedback, but I want them to, like, kind of get the reasoning behind why I said each thing that I said. Like, like, I really liked one guy's edit, and I thought it made great art. But I'm also like, okay, this sort of works for YouTube, but then there's this one thing about the video that doesn't, because it gets, like really slow paced at the end. And I thought it was cool. And if I saw it as a movie, I'm like, oh, this would be neat. But then here's a few things that kind of need to tweak about this. Okay, since this thing is never going to work, I'm just gonna, nope, it doesn't even do that. How can I even get these things out of the ground? Okay, yeah, I just killed it. Good. Hey? Can I slingshot this? Oh, I don't even have the slingshot in my inventory. This is like an animal crossing when you spot a hot air balloon. Very exciting moment. Going to sleep. Woo! Okay, getting a lot better. Ooh, trees drop more wood. Uh. Ah, uh, what do I take here? I can never change back. Trees drop. Gather. I feel like gatherer is going to be more useful because I could always just chop more trees, so who cares? Yeah, gatherer is way better. The 25% more. I liked it that they put a number value on it. Okay, now we are in fall. Wow. Beautiful. I kind of love that. Ah, this is satisfying. I think I'm going to stop it there. I want to I save fall for the next time. Anyway, this is a lot of fun. Going through Stardew Valley. Uh, I guess we're halfway through the year now. Because we've still got fall and winter. But now we've got to go ahead and build... Um, build the coop and the house expansion. It's kind of nice. Like, we've got it at a good pace. I think we have a lot of money at the end of summer. Still a lot I'd change. But, you know, it is the first year. So I think I will leave it there. And then we'll pick it up next time.